welcome to episode 160 of the Art School Live Streams. Um, I'm Mark, and uh, I am going to be giving you feedback today. So, all right, let's go. Uh, what's up, Arya? So I'll be starting a new work, and I'd love to take those steps with your support. This piece is again with my fairy and my own style. <clears throat> the story behind the scene <clears throat> is that um, is this specific transformation is triggered by a personal speech as a personal special flower as you can see in, it, er, in her hands. She'd uh, be sitting in a beautiful lush area with a waterfall, a little lake, some glowing gemstones, and of course the magical willow tree that glows, uh, that grows these flowers. I'd like to hear your thoughts on my first sketch of this piece and of course tips on how to proceed and what to write on. Alright, so... Uh, most of it will have to do with, with composition at, at this stage, you know, usually that's the first stages of, of most illustrations, figuring out like how you're going to order everything and uh, how to display the, the visual elements so that they, so that you communicate, you know, the emotions that you're trying to communicate or, or convey the feelings and whatever. Um, <clears throat> so here, like a good one to, to keep in mind, to remember, uh, like a, a good composition ratio like structure for your compositions the rule of thirds i'm sure you know this already but uh just for others and for context just to lay out the, the foundation for my feedback <clears throat> usually you'll try to have your um your focal point on one of these intersections you know if you're going with like a pretty textbook composition which the rule of thirds is great it works it's easy to apply did i say that it works and uh and it worked <clears throat> So, uh, not bad at all. You have the head of your character right here. Um, but usually, you know, what you want to have on, on that intersection is kind of the, um, the the overall mass of your focal point also. So, in here, like, yes, you know, the head is right there, but it would be much better if, like, the character was a little higher so that maybe, like, it hits the torso or something like that. So, it does, it's not like a, an exact science, you know, it's... It's more like a, just a recommendation guidelines, so it's not like a strict rule or anything. But <clears throat> otherwise, it tends to to leave a lot of like empty space. Uh, that can be that can be a little uncomfortable. It's almost the equivalent of um, like in a book, you know, you have like a paragraph, but then like the next text, is, you have like a bunch of like empty space, and then the paragraph starts much lower on the page. It just kind of it's just kind of strange a little bit. Um, and so for best result, I think I would push this one up here a little more. And uh, also depending on kind of the, the story that you're trying to convey, like what's more or, more or less important in the piece, maybe you could scale her up a little bit so that you have more of this uh, like foreground and then the background much farther back. Um, it kind of just depends where you want to spend your time to. You know, if you want to spend more time on the character, if that's what you're like the most passionate about in this illustration or if you really want to focus on the background <clears throat> like which one is the most important if the character is too small in the background sometimes the background can kind of take over and be the be the element that, that kind of screams the loudest and steal the show in a way and so so yeah i'll just you know maybe readjust re rebalance those things so maybe she's a little closer to us like this maybe still you know making sure that she's somewhat in that that rule of third intersection uh, but maybe making her better uh bigger so that we can yeah see like her facial emotions better uh if that's what's important yeah and then similarly maybe maybe the moon is also important i don't know maybe it's not um but you could have maybe that 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 waterfall a little closer as well to the to the subject your focal point just so again that you don't have kind of like this void in between of just just rocks you could definitely add a bunch of stuff in here like maybe if you had like some vegetations growing on the <clears throat> on the rocks or i don't know maybe like a smaller stream here like a side side waterfall or something like that to to use the space that'd be nice but uh otherwise you could just also just bring that a little closer maybe a little lower and then this way, like this, this other kind of landmark in the painting would be a little closer again to the rule of thirds. Uh, and so you would kind of naturally travel from her and go like, oh, that's, that's a point of interest too. It just makes traveling through the illustration a little bit easier. Yeah. Other than that, <clears throat> just make sure that you, um, yeah, keep in mind, <coughs> excuse me, keep in mind, um, the value difference, um, 
between the foreground and the background, making sure that everything's a little more desaturated in the, in the background, like you don't go as dark um, in your colors versus the foreground. And also like the sparkly bits here, this, 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 making sure that this again doesn't steal the show too much. Like maybe this, uh, maybe it's covered by more leaves, uh, more branches, so that it doesn't like overpower the rest. Oh, that helps. There we go. All right. Um, I did have a great <laughs> vacation. My voice it recovered a little bit, but I haven't, um, I haven't tested speaking or talking for six hours straight since. So we'll see. <laughs> I kept on working on my fox iguana creature. It gave, uh, I gave it a longer neck, changed the position of the ears, simplified the muscles more, pushed its left hind leg and a little more forward, gave it a complete paint over. Questions. Do you have any general advice on drawing fur and feathers? Um, I give it a shadow for display to give it the illusion of actually walking on the ground. Is there any better way to achieve it, uh, to achieve it than this? Uh, I think it still looks a bit like it's floating. What could I do to make it look a bit more realistic? Are there any other things that I could improve? Um, all right, so for the shadow, real quick, um, a lot of it will have to do at, uh, uh, with the, the shadow like right next to the object, <coughs> like when it when it touches the ground. So like just making sure that this is this here is maybe a little darker and a little sharper, because there's less uh, less opportunity for the the light rays to kind of be diffused, because it's really just you know they're blocked by the thing that's right next to the ground and so it's gonna it's gonna be a much sharper much sharper shadow just because the distance is so little um but yeah but uh <clears throat> with distance here like the rest of the leg then yeah you have you would have a little bit more diffusion in your shadows but if you just uh, tighten up this one here that one there that one that's a little further back whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. Shut your trap. Like already, you know, it feels it feels like it's touching a lot more. So it's really it's really just that it's the, the shadow right at the, the point where it touches the, the other surface. So um yeah, the shading on here looks really nice. I think a lot of the like a lot of the feedback here will have to do a little bit with the shading. Um uh, but it's not so much in the, the the quality of the shading, it's more how you how you represent the volumes that's uh, that you're painting here. So like the leg here looks a lot like a cylinder, but really seen from the front, like, uh, you know, quadruped legs are very narrow. And so like the highlights, um, like the way that, <coughs> I need to go take one of these pills once again to help with the cough. <coughs> <coughs> The way that the shadow will, no, not the shadow, but the way that the light will kind of fall off on here, it'll be a lot, uh, a lot more intense at the top, and then quickly kind of drop. And uh, so, yeah, that zone of shadow here, you just kind of push that one up, make it feel more like it's like a flat cylinder, which that's really what it is. So same on the side here, the side of the leg, you can, uh, you can have a little more shadow because the arm is pointing down just like the torso, it's kind of the side of the torso is kind of pointing down straight to the ground. Same thing here with the side of the leg, same thing with the side of the, the back leg. Uh, so you can have a little bit more shadow there and focus those highlights on the top here, on the shoulder, but otherwise the shading looks, looks really, really nice. Of the colors that you have in here, maybe to help with um, with the focal point, which is usually going to be the head of the the creature, the animal, the person. Uh, you could maybe crank up the saturation on uh, on your colors in here. So if it goes a little, we actually have like a gradient, so the tail maybe not as saturated, but around the head, you get a little bit more saturation. I'm exaggerating here, but kind of that, that effect because our eyes are attracted to saturation and so when something is more saturated the gaze tends to to end up here the other one that you're talking about the, like to make this look a little bit more realistic um, a lot of that will have to do with the your treatment of the materials so like the surface here 
um, you know, like, a, let me find out what that would actually look like. Because I'm not sure of my visual library for, um, like, iguanas. <laughs> but okay, so so then if it's not, like, really the... If it's not going to be, like, the, the like the shininess, because that, be, that would be a big one. And, like, uh, if it were, like, a dragon, maybe, like, the, some of the scales would be a little shinier. But in here, those are all, like, nice things that you could add. Like, a little bit of, uh, like, that... Like, that dotted texture like for all the little spikes and maybe like some yeah some some folds around the legs uh some some little bumps so it looks kind of like a pickle and some imperfections on the skin some some um blotchiness uh in the pigment of the skin it's all subtle it's all subtle stuff essentially so i don't know that i have a brush but you added some of it so it would just to be uh, to go a little more a little, a little correct, like crank that up a bit more. Essentially, like zoom in here and then start to render. You know, like you have like really nice big details, medium sized details, but the smaller details, not as not as sharp. But like if you guys got, if you got a little bit of fur in here, you could have that. It's too bright. <laughs> But it'll be those uh, those smaller details so the highlights that's not the right texture at all but but having having that kind of stuff i know that's just like a, a terrible example but um but still i think it it helps you know it's those that that extra resolution that you get with uh, that level of texturing that really m gives it life um and then just just slightly better lighting too so making sure that your lighting is really on point that uh, like everything casts shadows so it's bring back our a little bro here um you know like you can see under the eyes yeah like just a little just this little amount of wrinkles that he's got casts a shadow um same thing with these folds here like underneath some of these scales the scales themselves cast shadow so it's like really tightening up that lighting help define those volumes even better i think on top of the eyes oops not darken underneath on the cheeks a little bit of highlights and then the bottom of the jaw and going into the fur some extra highlights there then what's going on with the nose around here a little bit of highlights mm. and then some some wrinkly wrinkles and then making sure that all of that cast shadows when needed. Yeah, it could be that like, like those finer details. A good problem to have at this point. Um, this is super fun to do, like the, the rendering, the rendering, the rendering part at the end, because it's uh, yeah, it's a lot more relaxing. You don't have to focus as much. Like the the hard part's done, <clears throat> and it looks really good. So now it's just like uh, turning this from like regular resolution to HD. And um, right in here. Oh, the house, Laura. Super cool. Gaily. I hope you are well as well. <laughs> I hope some clothed figure, um, I have some clothed figure drawings made from reference for you to look at this week. Uh, one of them is not yet finished, but at least you can see some of my progress in it. Any feedback on these will be highly appreciated. Right on. So. In terms of like the quality of the reference, maybe, and he did a fantastic job by the way, but um, <clears throat> like finding something that has a little bit more light information usually helps. Like this is a great one. You know, you have the, the folds up here that are very bright versus the folds down there and they're very dark. You have a nice, nice range of values. Um, and here, not as much, like the, the range is very limited. The, the brightest color is what's this. And the darkest, I mean, the darkest would be black, but um, that's pretty limited. You know, it's uh, less than 50% gray. So I would just find references that that are more like that. That one's the that one's an MVP MVP reference. It's really nice. But anyways, um, you, did, you did really good here. The only thing I'll point out uh, having to do with like this just the flow of the of the folds uh, to be careful about is uh, like these kinds of slopes. So. Kind of like nice and straight and then it kind of kicks kicks out the end almost like a parabolic curve 
but making sure that these curves are mostly straight at the at the at the where the tension point is, and then having them kind of flare out at the end. Um, it's like a nicer flow to them. Like in here, it's a little bit more, a little bit more broken. It's more like straight, straight, and then curves instead of having this super slight curve and then just just cranking that curve up even more. So yeah, not a big, not a big difference. It's just it's like softening that curve a little bit, but that's it. Otherwise, a uh, really, really nice job here. Maybe you could have a bit more of a gradient, you know, from dark to light up here. Maybe even more than the reference, because but right now it's slightly less than the reference, so just uh, easy fix though. Just a little bit more of that. But very nice folds here. Now I'm noticing is uh, like this one right there, like this <laughs> lump. No, it's a group of folds. Whatever. Let's just go with group. Um, overlapping kind of the rest of the dress. It's, it's like a like a flap, you know. That's uh, that's hanging on top, uh, but in here it feels maybe a little bit more flat because of that. So once again, I think it's just the the brightness of your values making that that group here a little brighter, maybe a little darker, like a bit, bit more of a a separation between the two, more more shadows. So I really feel like one over the other one. I get in the small details. Maybe there, there's something else that we could uh, that we could push a bit. Like the uh, like the peak of the folds, the crest of the folds, like right here, always gets a little brighter <clears throat> in uh, in your reference. So you could punch these out a bit more here. Again, it will just make the folds seem a bit more three D, give them a bit more volume. But I think it's I think it's almost any everywhere here. So rest of the fold here always a little brighter always a little brighter 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 and maybe <clears throat> maybe that's something that we're that you're missing here those those smaller details but um oh no not medium sized details big details uh and most of the small details too it's quite on point that looks really good yeah you're mentioning the, the proportions of the arms a little bit but the most important here is the folds <laughs> so the arm maybe that hands a little too far out you could bring it in a bit or maybe just make it bigger let's hold it yeah like her elbow is a little bit more out this way and the reference is a little bit a little bit more in and so it gives her like a slightly longer forearm as a result not a big deal and you could probably just move that with um, the liquify tool as a whole kind of slide it to the to the left. <coughs> Moving on to Preston. So uh, thank you, Preston. I did have fun. So I got swamped by life and work last week, so I didn't submit. I uh, had only one, I only done studies that weren't, uh, that weren't worth critiquing. See what I said when I <clears throat> when I'm saying my English is poop. Um, so I didn't get as much as I wanted this week either, but I started a new character. He's the younger brother of the, the Lighting Spearman. <laughs> if I name my characters, uh, yeah, I never do. <clears throat> I used to when I was younger, like much, much younger. Um, I feel like maybe I get less... I don't know there's a reason. I think maybe maybe I get less attached and so I don't feel like I need to to finish something if it starts up the wrong way or something. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, it's good good observation. I don't really do that um anymore at least. Yeah, so he's uh he's the younger brother of the lighting spear, man. Um he's physically weak and small but extremely creative and talented in many things. He's an exceptional blacksmith who has incredible flame powers that he can't fully control yet. Did a lot of iterations to really nail his design down. I'm still stuck on how to decide his gauntlet's design. I'm thinking it'd be too good to have them really detailed since um, they're his key feature. So I might combine a bunch of the iterations into one high detail design. Actually, um, I do name them, but only when it's like a finished painting, which I haven't done in a long time. 
I feel like I've been doing a lot of studies recently, a lot of just sketches to practice and practice and practice, like on a level of my skills, and not so much like applied that. But, uh, but yeah, like, usually when I when I finish like a big painting, you know, like a 15 hour painting or something like that, even less, like 10, 8, whatever, um, much more likely than I'll, I'll name them then. I don't know why. Uh, so, so my questions for this week are about design and anatomy. Also, which color combination do you recommend for the gauntlets? I was thinking of doing dark gray, silver, and gold and assigning them to different parts based on their function. Alright. Yeah, so just like one thing for, for presentation. Um, <clears throat> to present your characters. Like, try to avoid doing that, you know, like having a foot point straight at us and the other one like straight to the side. Uh, a lot feels a lot more natural and it's harder obviously but it uh, feels a lot more natural when it they're kind of like in a v um not so much like a 90 degree angle so let's shift his boots and tip his boot here a little bit could do it more even but uh, already that helps a bit feels uh, feels less stiff um Joe asking for uh, what chair I use. I use this, this one here. It's a, what's the brand again? Uh, Herman Miller. It's the um, Embody. Embody gaming chair. Although <sighs> I don't see why this is any more of a gaming chair than the other Embody chairs that they have because there's the same model. It's just this one was black. And, like, it's the only one that was black, the other one that had like funky colors. So I went with that one. But I don't know, like to be honest, like I like it because I, I can like put my, my feet on the on the seats and it's not, it's, it's not like any hard like plastic trim around it uh, that the other Herman Miller chair have, like the, the more standard one that like the, the one that I use at, uh, at work um, when I was working at Blizzard or the one that I have back there. Um, the only thing I don't like with this one is that it's a little noisy after a while, like it, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's a lot of like <laughs> squeaking uh, for recording. That's one thing that's re that's really annoying to me. If you don't care about the noise, no problem. But but the other one, the other is a whatever, Her Her Heron, the most popular Herman Miller chair. That one is like super silent, very nice, super comfortable too. Um, like a mesh everywhere and so it breathes nice uh, it's just it's made for sitting down nice and straight like you can't really kind of just, you can't really get super comfortable if you're relaxing on it but um, anyways back to the topic here uh, Preston so your gloves or your gauntlets hmm like I'm just looking at your your shape language overall for your character like you don't really have a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of stripes and so this one feels feels strange feels a little a little different that looks that looks cool. Like it looks more mechanical than the first two, maybe, just because he's got like some, yeah, some stuff in between the joints, and you can tell it's a little bit, a little bit more than just a glove, like that one too. Uh, but maybe that one's a little too busy as a result. Yeah, I kind of dig this this design. Kind of simple, a little techy, but not too much. Um, and like the the overall amount of details kind of kind of matches up with the the character that you have. And color wise, um, yeah, I like it. Maybe a little less, excuse me, a little bit less yellow. So that he's still, I mean, I like that you that you kept like the more intense yellow for the hair. That definitely helps. Uh, but maybe you could, uh, yeah, take out some of the yellow for the, on the gauntlets. Maybe like change that to red or just so that, and like keep maybe just accents. Uh, of yellow left and right so that overall still the head is like the dominance it's clearly the the focal point and then this way maybe the the glove the glove will feel the the gauntlet will feel more even more integrated with the, the rest of the design maybe you could have yeah like if you have like some some sort of leathery sleeve or something uh maybe you could have like some some leathery pads on on top there or <clears throat> like bolted on or something i don't know but uh yeah i like i like this direction that was nice not to say that you should take this one in particular, but uh, but I like it. Uh, oh, nice. So I like this. This that looks good, but it looks maybe a little too medical, like more of a 
like he works in a lab or something like that. <clears throat> Less of that like rugged uh, mechanic kind of color palette. I like, mm, mm, I like this. More blue, so that you get kind of like this triads going on. Red, blue, and yellow. And then with leather accents, that's nice. Yeah, and I definitely like the, the bigger apron too. Looks cooler, looks more like it's clearer what the character's about. Yeah, I like this a lot. I like this color palette a lot. Um, so about anatomy, yeah. So the, the foot here, uh, maybe the, the forearm here is a little long compared to that one, just looking at the two. The elbow for this, the elbow for that one would be somewhere behind here, shoulder around here, shoulder, elbow. Mm, that's pretty close. You know, this arm could be just pulled back a little bit, could be a little foreshortened, so that's fine. Um, it's just uh, the distance from the elbow to the, to the wrist a lot longer on the right arm. So I think you could just push that down a bit. <clears throat> Problem solved. And uh, and the gesture in the hands, maybe having something that's a little bit more relaxed, looks a little bit, I mean, that, that one's, the, the fist is all right, but this open hand, it just looks weird, you know, like <laughs> a little stiff. Uh, so if we're maybe like towards the inside, it's harder obviously, but you know, like the thumb, and the rest of the fingers, just yeah, just a little less stiff. Don't need to change the arm or anything like that. But anyways, good stuff, Preston. Colors this ear, the colors here really, really, really help. Uh, you did a really good job. All right, moving on. Sue. Good night, Aria. Thanks for swinging by. a lot <clears throat> all right uh thank you very much i did i hope you also had a great week so i added shading and lighting to my animal crossing piece i corrected isabel's uh, Is isabel's leg after legs after suggestions and i feel it's almost ready any feedback on how it's coming along i feel some of the <clears throat> places look like they have too much soft shades i'm also working on a collab with other artists from a common theme Folk legends. The legend here is based on the polished tale of a lady who killed her husband and felt no. <laughs> great, great, uh, great tale. Uh, just fear of being found out, like a, like a proper serial killer. <clears throat> Would you have any feedback on it? Wanted uh, to mostly convey Slavic folk vibe while also hinting at hinting at murder. Just trying to get a feel for that. That Slavic. Uh, folk uh, kind of outfit style. Hmm, all right, all right, all right. A lot of patterns, also a lot of like really bold colors, and a lot of trims, and like a lot of pattern in the trims. Very interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. <clears throat> Welcome, Preston. All right, let's take a look at this one first. Um, yeah. So, did a really good job here. Maybe like I would I would go maybe like a little darker in uh, in her shadows for her shadows like the dudes in the back they blended super nice uh, but in her case maybe maybe going just a little darker in some areas because you know the the darkest shadow that you have is still, still pretty bright uh, not everywhere obviously but in areas where the light would not be able to escape as easily okay, armpits under the arm maybe here. And she is buff, huh? Ooh, she been lifting all this money. Maybe a little bit more of that. Like the leg back here. In the shadows, maybe a little bit more. Like, try to think of like a, of all the limbs as like cylinders. And uh, the cylinders that uh, that are facing the top, like it, like this one, like for the leg, for example. The leg is a cylinder that's mostly like that, and so the light would hit directly on top, so it'd be very bright up here. But for the arms, not it's not the same angle. <coughs> Instead, the cylinder is more like that, and so the light will, if the light is coming from the same direction, you know, it'll, it'll be less likely to hit that surface. Hit the top of the shoulder, yes, uh, but uh, but the the uh, 
the arm itself, maybe not as much. So you could kind of like darken that quite a bit. Same thing with the leg here going down. The top of the leg, bright, but the leg itself going down, maybe a little, a little darker. This one is not quite going down. It's like at an angle, so you could keep it pretty light. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's that kind of stuff, that kind of shading uh, under the on the dress here as well too, and like directly underneath. Um, and then maybe the same thing on the back of Mani. Because the the shading in the background here feels, and I think it, it might be just too because uh, due to the fact that it's just a little darker, you know, the values are darker. It looks more shaded. It looks more three D than the character in the front. So yeah, like pushing that that shading a bit, I think would help. Other than that, this uh, this killer piece looks really nice. We did it. Yeah, it's a little bit more of that. Looks awesome either way. Um, <clears throat> and then for this one. What's up, Justin? So it looks pretty bright outside. You know, she's uh, she's wearing like a light <clears throat> colored dress uh, and it goes almost to pure white. So that tends to indicate that there's a lot of sun outside. It's very, very bright. And um, and that would, that would also impact on like, the rest of the scene. I think it's fine here at her feet. Um, <clears throat> That's bright enough. The grass looks looks really good, um, but like the building itself, maybe a little too dark. Even if it were like a black building, it would be brighter than that, just because of the sun and because like the surface, of the wood is a little, a lot, porous, and uh, uh, yeah, it tends to to trap or to catch a lot of lights, like the, the fuzziness of the wood. I think you could uh, go a lot dark, a lot uh, lighter here. Kind of everywhere on the on the building <clears throat> and then in the back here uh, maybe light again in the far distance because the house is probably not that deep and so it would cast shadow yes but not maybe onto the hills that are further back in the scene here and so it would help to kind of increase that uh, that depth a bit make the scene feel nice and deep and at the horizon, usually it's a little brighter. Whatever, something like that. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it's, it's mostly the building in here that it kind of it it darkens the mood a lot. Um, that's not the right way to say it. It it just yeah, it, it makes the values feel very dark, but but the characters tell like a different story that it is quite sunny outside. Um, one thing that might be cool uh, for this, this painting here, since, you know, since it's kind of sunny and that, that usually like sunny, cheerful day. And then you have like somebody that just committed a murder. <laughs> it's a weird contrast there. So maybe, maybe the sun is coming from the back of the scene and kind of casting a partial shadow on on the character like maybe the roof is uh you know like maybe there's a little bit of a roof and the roof casts a shadow and so on the house itself it'll be a little higher maybe than on her let's try that So that like the top of her face, the top of her body can be in the shadows. It just looks extra creepy. Uh, like trying to conceal her face kind of thing, you know. But yeah, anyways, and here uh, still we need to, to make some adjustments to make that work. Uh, to make sure that the hair of the character doesn't blend in with the, the wood in the back. So that, you know, there's maybe a little bit more of highlights on top of her hair or that the background's a little darker. It's just more contrast and values. Now, the rest of the body is fine. Obviously, it's it's all, all white. But here, like the tip of the of the knife, maybe again, a little too similar in values. You could, could uh, add a little bit more light here so that it pops from the background so we can clearly see it. <clears throat> and, um, and 
there's a lot of white, a lot of uh, like a big splash of white. So maybe introducing a gradient here would look nice too. So that the bottom of the dress a little darker. Up here a little brighter where it catches the lights. Maybe that's too much, but, but you know, something like that. And yeah, like uh, then the final one, uh, kind of related to related to her design. Just from what I saw, uh, from what I saw here on on Google, a lot of patterns. So I think I would just add more of that to get that to get that that feel, that Slavic feel. Um, I think that's very distinct about this style. This is like some really, really bold patterns, but small patterns. Um, almost always on every piece of clothing. What the heck? Where's the... There we go. So maybe... Mm, <clears throat> maybe on like her... Her belt here, maybe that could be a little darker, like maybe more, maybe red. Can't get the right red. There we go. And then a bunch of patterns on here, maybe at the bottom of the red of the dress too. Like the dress is this nice blank canvas that you could, yeah, like spice up with a bunch of uh, a bunch of trims, and a bunch of patterns to really sell that that culture. Something here, maybe around the on the color and having a bunch of patterns there but yeah overall Natalia this looks super cool um, I might recommend that you that you uh, like uh, increase the size of your canvas just a bit so that the head of the character is not too close to the to the edge of the uh, yeah to the edge of the canvas I think that would help get rid of that uh, claustrophobic claustrophobic feel that we might we might be getting um, so just slightly bigger yeah super cool so far on the house <clears throat> all right Coco <clears throat> you're up Through this whole week, I've studied concept sheets and the portfolios of other pro artists, and I have questions about them. Um, so I've been working on my newest skin for a few weeks now. I realized that I could have been quicker if I didn't attempt to make everything perfect and looking so realistic. This week, I found influences from which I could learn a lot about how to make my skin character concept sheets. I want to ask if my unders uh, if I understood everything right, and if I'm on the right way. So. Uh, <clears throat> My, uh, my concept needs to be loose and in more of a 2D style. And when I receive your feedback, and when I'm totally sure that I won't change anything on the skin and character, then I can draw it with all the shading, all the lighting, in all of the poses I like, etc. I'm not touching a few screenshots of my influences portfolios, which I studied this week. Right on. Um, <clears throat> I mean, at the same time, you know, it's good that you uh, that you took some extra time because then you uh, you probably know where you where you spent more time and seeing the end result, being able to gauge if that was time that was well invested or not. You know, if you spend like. Uh, two hours polishing something and then it only improves the whole the whole image by like half a percent I mean, it's not that easy to not that easy to tell us numbers, but uh, You know, you can have both you know the The version before you did the changes and the version after and see like how much better it is. Is it? two hours better worth of time or maybe not uh, but you, you kind of have to spend the time to be able to know that. So, <clears throat> not a bad experience at all. Um, like I said, it's also good um, for your portfolio to be a little bit more polished than, uh, than what you would 
find in the actual games in the art books and that kind of stuff you're trying to you try to show off you know that's the point <clears throat> These are great um, <clears throat> for a like a portfolio piece. I personally would have pushed that a lot more, like with shading and all that stuff. Maybe keep one that way, and then the other one like should just really shade it. Nice lighting and texture, um, <clears throat> texture information, material details. Same thing here. <clears throat> like that looks more like a like a production piece. Something that was done for the game, like uh, you know, at work. Less of a portfolio piece. I mean, they put the, the artist put it in its portfolio and his or her portfolio. Uh, so it is technically a portfolio piece, but but I'm sure what they applied, you know, for with uh, what they applied with for the job was well, probably a lot more polished than that. But I mean, this this looks great, obviously. Um, for, great inspiration for the content, you know, to see like the kind of stuff that that they want to see that that you'll be doing at work, you know, if you were to work there, uh, like those uh, like progression shots, like different variants on the same character, different different skins, exactly what you've been doing essentially, um, that kind of stuff too. Really nice, really cool to see. Broken down. Yeah, those are great references. <clears throat> Just don't hesitate to to push even more than that. You know, this is it's it, this looks really like a production like production concept art. They're great, uh, but for your portfolio, you'd want to to show off even more than that so that uh, you grab their attention. And when you get there, you know, you can do that kind of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> But to get the job you want to, you want to just go above and beyond a little bit. Not that it's easy, those are really good, but uh, just keep that in mind. Um... But you're right, you're right here, that's a, that's a really good observation. Um, character concept needs to be loose, a little bit looser, and more of a, like that, yeah, that concept concept uh more of that concept feel like like this is a great example you know but like a really good concept sheet uh that would work great great for portfolio if it were maybe polished a little more uh, but also that would that just a great concept to work from you know if you're if you're a 3d artist if i were to look at this and be like oh yeah i got i got a lot of information out of this um yeah that, that's nice these are great too and like you don't need crazy poses when you're going through a lot of variants when the <clears throat> like the the, the 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 personality of the character is not so much the the importance but if you're trying to display just outfits then that's great and that kind of stuff works perfect for that when you're trying to sell the character herself or it, like the character itself then having more of a pose then yeah that that's better in that case but uh, but overall just that is all good, just a little more polish. And, uh, but yeah. Mm -hmm. It just helps you waste less time. So if anything, maybe, you know, if you have more time as a result to do more, uh, more variants that are not as polished, <clears throat> and then, uh, and then you kind of pick the best ones after that to, to really push to the to the next level because i and i understand that completely that i used to be just like you <clears throat> like you start something and you, you get really attached to the concept it kind of becomes like your baby but it's it's really good if, especially if you're going to work as a concept artist to to get rid of that feeling as soon as possible um and, and yeah, just crank out a lot of stuff and, and be very, very selective with your babies. <laughs> like, oh, this baby, nah, 
that baby, nah, nah, that one, nah, I'll keep that one, you know, <laughs> so not put too much uh, emotional investments in, in any concept. That's why if you, if you don't, if you go a little looser at the beginning and you do more variants, I think that helps to, to reinforce that. And only the ones that you're like really sure of, that's, that only needs maybe like a, like a little bit of a, I mean, if it gets to this point, essentially. That would be like a, a good a good place to be like, let's say you have a bunch of characters like this, and then you decide to polish one for the portfolio. These could also be in the portfolio, but yeah, like these two examples, those would be good. Um, like polish levels to present, uh, to get feedback on the design. And then, and then from there, like when that's locked in, when you're like, oh, I'm really happy with that design, then you can, then you polish it. Oh, that makes sense. <clears throat> but yeah, like this, this turned out great, obviously, but, uh, but yeah, a little stiff, you know, it looks more like a, like a, like a 3D model. Although that might be great since it's a skin, it feels, it looks more like, like these things here. But the, um, I think it, like the symmetry also also helps to to generate kind of like that feeling that it's a it's a three D model because everything looks a little too perfect. Like in here, you can see a lot of these characters, a lot of um, uh, uh, <laughs> what's the word? As asymmetry. Like there's there's no symmetry essentially. There's there is in some parts, but there's a a big um, a big part of the process that goes into breaking that symmetry and, and finding things on on both sides of the characters that are different. So like here, you know, doesn't have it on the other side. That one's different, doesn't have it on the other side. The dress is kind of not symmetrical. And here, even though, yeah, in here, that's pretty damn symmetrical. But this is still a little bit of a, a little bit of a difference, right? It's not exactly the same. Here, like the tattoos are not this exactly the same. Here you have something going on, on the side dress is definitely not symmetrical and so finding those also really helps to just make the design a little bit more yeah a little more organic less stiff anyways hope that helps google uh, <clears throat> a lot of good points here uh what's up katy uh cat <laughs> the rest of the name otherwise i messed it up uh, where were you katiana kati 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 right. sounds strange with my quebec accent <clears throat> um i want to discuss some points that i struggle the most when i make artworks so welcome by the way uh your first posts So I usually make my paintings in black and white first, then I make the, uh, then I colorized it. <clears throat> but somehow I feel like my final piece always looks like the lack of volume and depth. So I'm quite confused how to make the piece not mixed with the background. Uh, yeah, so gonna be pretty straightforward here. Um, so. <clears throat> Let's see. So um, <clears throat> the, va the the colors in the background, values in the background. I mean, in your black and white image here is maybe not as bad as a of a problem as it is in the final image. Uh, like the hair, you know, contrasts a lot more with the background. That's nice. That's what we want. <clears throat> and then here, and especially here, everything is purple, so it really blends it together. Almost looks like she's like coming out of a cloud of purple smoke. So number one would be that, you know, to make uh, to make the values and the colors difference between the characters, the character overall and the background. <clears throat> so like something that would pop a lot is if it were much darker in some areas or or much brighter. Let's go ahead and try to do this quickly. Mm -hmm. 
So number one is going to be value and uh, actually number one and two is going to be value and colors. It's going to play a big part here. So I'm just going to do it overall and to give you an idea. But if it were like this, if it were much darker, then suddenly the character pops a lot. Whoa. Now it's very striking. A lot more than, than this, where the character comes blending with the background. Even if it was like much brighter, that helps too. So two ways that you can go. Uh, you can tweak the background and then also maybe the character herself. So if you make the background a little bit darker, you can make the character maybe a little bit brighter, like slightly more contrast. No good. Uh oh. Okay, the background's not dark enough. Anyways, um, that's one way to do it. Uh, you could also just add like rim lights to the character if the if the background is dark enough. If it's if it's bright, it doesn't doesn't work as well. But let's say we darken this quite a bit, but maybe not enough like this. Let's change the colors too because the colors play a big part. Um, purple and purple always gonna always gonna blend, and so try to go for uh, either like a more neutral colors. Or something that's complementary to the purple. In this case, like maybe not green, but like a much cooler color because your purple is quite warm. So maybe a, a darker blue, but cooler blue. And then, if that's not enough still, because for some characters it won't, then yeah, a little bit of a, a little bit of rim lights always saves the day. You're good here on the on most parts, but maybe like on the dress, top of the shoulder here, part of the hair. Uh, rim light always helps. <clears throat> so a few things that you can do, a few tools that you have to to make the character spot from the background. Usually values and colors going for something that's a little bit more complementary for the background, complementary colors, and um, and just either the background much lighter, like it was here initially, like the character is a lot darker in values, the background's a lot brighter. So if you if you kind of maintain that into the final, I think it would it wouldn't have been much of a as much of an issue. Um <clears throat> And then, um, yeah, the other one would be like the quality of your shading. Characters, character looks really nice. Uh, overall, like nice proportions. Maybe she's, uh, maybe she's a, a little thick. Some some places, like the torso is very wide. Like this is a very very wide rib cage for somebody with such a small head. <clears throat> so you could maybe. Bring that in just a bit. Um, but overall, the anatomy is great. The arm here feels good. The hand looks good. Stylized, but looks good. Um, so it's going to be the, the quality of the shading. So going a little darker in some areas. Not everywhere, but like whenever. Essentially adding a lot more ambient occlusion. So like loss of light in, in like crevices in between the folds when two when two volumes kind of touch like the, the the like the space in between here where the light kind of gets trapped and can never escape um, that's I mean occlusion and adding a lot of that here I think would help a lot just make your character feel a lot a lot more volume uh, a lot more three D like <clears throat> so I'll try not to add too much to like completely ruin your style. Because your style is definitely more like this, this uh, like water color, like light, light shading. But in some areas, I think we could definitely push it a bit more. That would be like that kind of stuff. You're going a little darker there. Maybe underneath the arm here, a little darker. Underneath that thing. I'll go too heavy just so, so that you, so that. You get what I'm saying, but <clears throat> it'll be that in uh, in whatever amounts you you prefer.
like when you draw anything when you shade anything rather uh, think of it as just like a simple simple volume you know, like the the hand here the arm like you did great that that's very nice um, so maybe, maybe we don't see it here as much but think of everything as a volume so I you know like that thing here what is that it's kind of like a cone and so if the light's coming from above just like it is here if you have a cylinder that's the arm and you have the lights <clears throat> the light hitting the cylinder from above so you're gonna have a shadow underneath just like you had with the arm here um, what about this you know if you had a cone next to it which is basically that little that little poofy thing <laughs> I don't know what the name of that is, but uh, the same idea here, you know, like the top of it here would be bright and the bottom would be a little darker and the face that's against the light would be darker as well, shaded like a cone, so same idea. Maybe a little darker here and lighter, lighter on top and do that for like everything. Try to simplify everything down to simple volumes and shade them all the same way. But yeah, a lot of it is, uh, is going to be the contrast. So just going dark enough in some in some areas, like behind here and like uh, in deep in the hair. It's probably not going to be a lot of lights that can escape from there. It can go a lot darker there. And the whole head itself is kind of like a ball, a big ball. You can shade that just like a sphere. The shoulder here, the arm, just like a cylinder. A little bit more light on the top, maybe. Um, but it'll be that kind of stuff. It's like really pushing those those shadows, mostly, and uh, and be a, being a little bit more mindful of the the values between your character and your background and the, the colors too a little bit. Well, that helps. Um, very pretty illustration though. Love the colors that you chose here. Uh, one last thing, maybe, like your yellows. Maybe trying to because. Um, unique colors tend to stand out from from the rest so if everything is purple and you have like a different color in there that's going to attract a lot of attention just because it's more rare and so here you know you have a lot of purple and only a little bit of yellow and so the like I've, i noticed my gaze going going down here going down here a lot just because of all those those golden details so i would maybe like tone these down maybe like a, a little darker and perhaps adding something golden like around her hair, her face, uh, something that's maybe a little more saturated, so a little, a little more intense gold color to bring the gaze back up. So, yeah, maybe she's got like a, a brooch or something here, or maybe like her, her necklace is golden, but it's like a slightly more saturated yellow. And so then it'll attract a little more attention and it will kind of scream louder than the other yellows but it'll scream in the right in the right area here focal points anyways just a small detail that i wanted to point out moving on to angelica um so here's my result for the skeleton over the reference uh over references practice to be honest i'm not too sure whether i'm doing this correctly or not i kind of struggled in designing the perspective for the cylinder as a limbs hurts. that's why you're here let's check A good way to know, you know, is uh, you just hide the photo, you just hide the reference and see if it looks like a character in the same pose or in a similar pose. So there are some issues in here. So <clears throat> looking at this guy, for example, um, like the leg here, like you have the torso, you know, something, something like that. Slightly point, pointing down. Um, and then the leg is attached to that, but the leg is coming towards us, right? The knee is the knee is closer to us than, than his hip is. Um, <clears throat> and then the foot is almost yeah, pretty much lined up uh, lined up with um, the knee is lined up with the foot almost. Maybe the heel is a little further back than the knee itself, if we were to trace the line a line all the way down here to the ground. Uh, it, line, it lands a little bit in front of it. So the knee is closer to us than the heel. So, and then the knee is also closer to us than the hip. So we have a few reference points here to go by. And so that cylinder that makes up the thigh 
it's going to be a cylinder that's coming towards us. And so we probably won't see the top cap here. You know, like if it's a cylinder that's that's going away from us, we'll be able to tell by the fact that we can see the top of the cylinder. We can see the cap of it. We're higher than the cylinder. And then the bottom of it's kind of going away from us, right? Um, but in this case, it's the opposite of that. So the, the knee is the part that's closer to us and the top of the leg going towards the joint, towards the, the hips, is what's going away from us. And so we won't be able to see the top of that. Think of like, a, <clears throat> think if you're walking in the street and you look at like the side of a wall, like a, you have like a big building right next to you and you look at the side of that, like the facade of the, the building right next to you, that's pretty close, a lot closer, right, than the top of the building would be, right? Fair to say. And uh, the farthest part of the building, the top of the building, can you see the top of it? Mm -mm. Anything that goes away from you, you usually can see, at least if it's like a simple volume like this, usually can see the top of that because you're, you're lower. You can see the other side as well. And so imagine that you're right here and like this is a building, you have like a door right there, you have like a bunch of tiny windows and then you're looking up, you won't be able to see the top of that building, but you'll be able to see, you know, like the side of it. And if you're slightly below the building, like, like we are, because in this case, it's like a building that's like floating in space and we're, we're behind, or not behind, but we're lower, to, uh, lower than the building, you can see up here. We, of course, we can see all this facade, just like as if it were a building on the street and we're walking right next to it. But since we're lower than the building, we can see the bottom of it. But still, we can't see the top of it. So it's that logic going into this uh, this exercise that's that you really have to understand. And so this cylinder here, we'll be able to see the bottom of it because it's coming towards us. And the top of the cylinder going away from us, going towards the hips, uh, that's like the top of the building, you can't see it. And so it'll be capped like this and uh, you can only see the bottom cap here. Now, this leg, yeah, you nailed it. That's pretty much it. Um, so the knee is slightly closer to us, and so it's going to be the the heel that's slightly uh, uh, slightly behind that, a little further away. And so it's the opposite of what we did up here. So we can see the top; it's almost like an inverted building, but we can see the, uh, the like the bottom of the building because we're flying above the building. So that that would be kind of the logic for that one leg here. Um, I think you understand that. Seeing, seeing the arrest, uh, but maybe maybe it's more clear this way, I don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> but the rest here looks good. Yeah, you did, a, you did a good job. That back leg, that's exactly it. Um, here for that arm, I'm not sure, maybe the, maybe the forearm kind of coming back towards us, like the, like the upper leg here is. I can't really see it, so I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, those are, uh, that, that arm looks good. That is good too. Yeah, in this case, like this arm, I don't think there's much of a perspective going on. So when there's no perspective, when you look at like a... Where's my cylinder? There it is. So in here, we're looking at the cylinder from the bottom. That's where we can see, you know, the bottom cap of it. But if you look at the cylinder, like right at like eye level like you're right next to it, it's right in your face it's probably gonna look something like this if you can't see the top can't see the bottom so it just it looks like a square uh, that's probably what those would be like here so like a cylinder but in no particular perspective it just looks like a rectangle when like the limb is parallel to the screen like my arm is right now This is good. Yeah, no, those those are great. So I think I looked <laughs> I looked at the the only mistake maybe. Uh, but overall you did a great job here. Just make sure that your cylinders look cylindrical. That's gonna be a key foundation of almost anything that you draw in the future. Cylinders just they're present all the time. Uh, any construction, any character construction, any most props that you create. It's boxes, cylinders, spheres, cones, um, 
but that that's about it. So if he can draw a good cylinder, like he'll be set for life. <laughs> uh, but just make sure that they they feel circular, that they're not too flat, like a, like a flat cylinder. Like that's like a cylinder that's squished, like a toilet roll that you know that you stepped on. Uh, just make sure that they're, they're circular, nice and round, and uh, like not too deformed, like uh, like this one here, for example. Like, avoid that as much as possible. Like, just make sure that your cylinders are nice and feel round, that they feel cylindrical. But overall, you did a good job. Most of these quite convincing. Then check all of these, but, but the other photos, like the, the other um, single character ones here, look pretty good. In here, you would probably be able to see the top cap of that cylinder. We can see the bottom because uh, we're we're probably looking at this at this person uh, from a point of view that's that's higher than her waist, and so we're looking down at her feet, down at her knee, probably down at her hips as well, and so we would be able to see the top of that particular cylinder. <coughs> if you can see the bottom of that cylinder, you can see the top of it. So. You can never see the two caps. Good night, Natalia. Um, so yeah, so something that would be impossible is something like this. That's like an optical illusion. That's... That's impossible! Unless the cylinder is curved somehow, but... Yeah. So if you see the bottom cap, you can see the top usually. So, who the hell's... So um, we'll take uh, we'll take a <coughs> take a break here. I uh, just need to go get some <laughs> some water. <coughs> I'll be back in like fifteen, something like that, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll resume with Tomas. Ooh, hot! <clears throat> oh, you're welcome, Angelica. <clears throat> More than welcome. All right, let's keep going with uh, Tomas here. Here we go. So this is my ZBrush creature bust assignment. I had a hard time with the mouth area. At the end, I drew it on a separate sphere. It still doesn't feel right. All right. Ooh, that turned out really good. <laughs> yeah, his, his, um... I mean, the mouth area has... The, the structure overall is very, 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 very good. But the mouth is like, he's doing, he's doing this. Mm. Nice profile, good structure. You can see, uh, you can feel the, the jaw in there. <clears throat> Maybe one thing like with the jaw, you know, like it, if you push here, like right behind your jaw, this is like a, it can, it's kind of soft, right? Like right behind the jaw. And then the ear is kind of behind that. And so, what you can do here is just gonna introduce that, that overlap. So if you have the jaw, and then behind the ear. <clears throat> do I have my skull in here? I have the mini skull. Because really, <clears throat> what you're painting, uh, let's see, let me focus on this guy. So, like this whole structure, the zygomatic bone and the zygomatic arch, those are all protruding, you know, from the side here. You can see, like, it kind of sticks out. And that's gonna, and the ear is right, be, is right behind that, like the little hole right there. And But that's, that's more in to the, more inside of the skull. And so, it's just like, yeah, figuring out that overlap. <clears throat> Not figuring out, but uh, representing that overlap. Ugh. It's not a continuous, continuous surface. So you'd have more of a, like a stronger, you know, stronger shadow here. <clears throat> but overall, I mean, that turned out really good.
like the um the 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 mad cap on this <clears throat> doesn't really doesn't really help because it, it it flattens things a lot but uh but anyways the structure is good so so that's that's the most important um <clears throat> detail wise maybe like other than the jaw maybe mm, Yeah, like two two things that I would point out. <clears throat> First one's gonna be like those uh, th the fat pad right here. Like, you can see mine a lot better now <laughs> as I'm aging. But you know, like this this stuff right there. Um, you have another one here right under the eyes. <clears throat> but the one right here, this is uh, you're gonna get a lot of fold here, nasolabial line, and then that fat pad is gonna like fall on that like you know and accentuates that that wrinkle essentially <clears throat> so in your case i think it's just like it's a little too high so it's, it's like it looks like he's doing this but he's, he's mostly relaxed elsewhere in the face so just kind of relaxing those muscles and if anything kind of lowering that that wrinkle a bit but the top of the cheeks here is mostly uneventful maybe you can have still those those lines right there. But uh, yeah, if we like simplify these. This is kind of like a volume and it just, it's pulled down by gravity. <clears throat> and so, yeah, you're gonna get more of a line underneath. And uh, Maybe some of the highlights will catch on the top of it. But uh, the, the majority of the uh, 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 of the shading will have to be right down there. The nasal labial line, not so much on the top here. So it's a lot, a lot more flat. I'm just shifting that mask down. Um, <clears throat> so that was one. Um, and uh, the other one was, yeah, like the, the mouth area. So, I think really it's just to just add more 3D, you know, to this. Uh, like push the mouth in a lot more. And kind of have this. Like, seen from the top, and I've seen from above, let's say you have like the, this is the face overall. The mouth. The, the mouth of the ball will be something like that. And so if you have like a smile on here, <clears throat> rather, let's not even look at that. Let's just look at the, the size of the, 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 like the head from, from above, seen from above, like a cut, cut out version, um, a slice of the head if it were cut this way. Uh, the mouth here is not gonna follow the surface. It'll always be a little, a little tighter. Because like these, you know, like our jaw is a lot narrower than not our jaw, our uh, our um, what's the word like for the the teeth, the 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 the, the, the dental apparatus. <laughs> I don't know, but like the teeth here, a lot more narrow than it's a lot narrower of a curve than uh, than the whole face itself, and so you know the lips kind of follow that curve they follow the they follow our teeth and so the corner of the mouth here will kind of go inside of the shape uh, whereas the maybe like the rest of the like the skin here all around it and all above it will be a lot more relaxed a lot more in line with the rest of the volume of the face anyways what does it say you can push this in <clears throat> maybe accentuate the lips here bit and push and push that in as well but he's got like a different he's got like this line right here separating the the lips and the chin adding on the shadow there represent that and then pushing the the lips in a bit as well the top lip will have that shadow too Like I said. And the bottom lip, if it sticks out, you know, kind of you know, receives the light a lot more easily. 
So it'll be kind of like the top here of the head, catching all that, that sweet, sweet highlight. Yeah, so from the side you really get, you really get this lip in, bottom lip, and then chin. And then the light is coming from above, it's lighting up this, this zone, it's lighting up the bottom lip, and it's lighting, lighting up the chin, but everything else is pointing down, it's going to be receding in the shadows. <clears throat> and in the corners, you push those even more, even more in. Slightly exaggerated here, but... Yeah, overall, I mean, other than that, very, very solid structure. He's an evil looking man, but um, but well structured. Uh, maybe like the chin could be a little less pointy. Usually it's a little bit more squarish. It's rarely, rarely pointed. You know, once again, if we get Mr. Skelly right here. You know, you can see the bottom of the chin is quite flat. Right? And it's a flat line. <clears throat> Some people are pointier than others, of course, but... Uh... But if it's too pointy, if especially for a male character, maybe it looks more like, a, like an implant or something. Anyways. Otherwise, very nice. Very good job, Tomas. Moving on to Cassandra. <coughs> Orbicularisaurus. Rolls on the tongue quite nicely indeed. Alright, Cassandra. I hope that you are also doing great. I am. Um, <clears throat> I've continued my anatomy studies and added likes to these skeletons. Could you take a look at them and point out any mistakes? Yes, man. <clears throat> <Cut. clears throat> All right. Look at them legs. Ooh, very nice. Um, just quickly, like the arm here, um, that one is good. Um, th the same thing would happen with the bicep um, on this arm as well. Like it would kind of cross. You know, starts on the inside, ends up on the outside of the arm of the yeah, on the outside on the outside of the arm. And here it starts on the inside, <clears throat> but it would kind of transition all the way across and end on the outside, um, just because the arm is kind of open this way, and so it kind of twists the arm pushes the bicep up and outwards you would have it on the inside if the if the the arm was like that the elbow like if you can see the elbow then the biceps on the inside if you can see the elbow usually the biceps on the outside <clears throat> so small small tweak here mm. Mm, very nice There. Good stuff. Very nice. Yeah, very, very nice. Um, the only thing, maybe, <clears throat> you know, if you look at like at the back view, for example, like there's a there's a lot of mass there. You know, it's like a big trunk of muscles. Um, like this thickness is about right for this uh, this particular view. So you just want to maybe like add add that back here. So I'll uh, 
So your 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 gracilis, <coughs> some semi tendinosis, semi membranosis right behind. Those would probably be be visible as well and kind of be bulging out this way, adding a little bit of thickness to the to the leg. Yeah, other than that, maybe you could um, maybe like adjust just the shape of the quadricep just a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> if I bring in my my big boy. Uh-oh. Why is he transparent? What the hell? <laughs> That's not helpful at all, is it? All right. Uh, let's forget that. <laughs> um... But yeah, like just looking at these legs here, um, and these muscles rather, uh, it's a small tweak, but um, but it does it does change the size, uh, not, not the size, but like the the shape of the muscle quite a bit. So I think it'll be just important to mention. But, uh, but yeah, so on the inside here, this uh, like the uh, 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 vastus medialis is a lot, a lot. Uh, a lot bigger of a muscle at the bottom so it's very much like a teardrop like this individual one here so very very fat at the bottom closer to the knee and a lot more um kind of subdued towards the tip or towards the area towards its origin um and then you're gonna get because a similar a similar pattern on the on the vastus lateralis on the outside of the leg here uh, but it's gonna start slightly higher on the leg Again, very heavy at the bottom, a lot lighter at the top. And uh, so then you can have kind of that, that shape there where it's mostly flat at the knee and then bulges out a little higher than on the inside. And, uh, and yeah, like from this particular angle, based on the, the angle of the leg, I mean, you would probably have that uh, vastus medialis here a little bit more dominant. So we're, we're looking at it a little more um, like head on versus uh, versus maybe this this one here. That's not as as open. So you're looking at the inside of the leg maybe a little bit more in this instance. And so that vastus medialis here, we're going to be able to see it a, lot, a little bit better. It goes and inserts a little lower before it joins to the, the kneecap here. Um, <clears throat> and so as a result of that, since you have like two big teardrop shapes with with the mass heavier at the bottom, um, the, uh, the 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 <clears throat> the vices from ours, the uh, the rectus from ours. I'm having a blank. Yeah, the rectus from ours on the in the middle, that's sandwiched in between, will appear to be a little bit thicker towards the top instead. So it's kind of like inverted an inverted teardrop. So it's and smaller here at the bottom and fatter towards the top. Um, yeah, just so. Just quick notes. Overall, this looks fantastic. They did a really, really good job here. Trying to scan for, for like mistakes, but. Refining kind of like the the shape of the quads, but other than that, you killed it really, really nice. Oh, that helps. Moving on to Cosmo. <clears throat> Recovered from my cold. I I can't. I don't know. <laughs> Not yet, I guess. <clears throat> uh, but thanks. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you had a great week too. So this week I finished what I worked on last week and I'm kind of proud of myself. I really liked how this one turned out. So I've been working really hard recently because of a, because I want to apply to university. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I understand that. You know, a lot of people they need kind of like that, that extra push, that extra structure. Um, 
I certainly need something like that, something like that too with uh, with my work, you know, so that's why like I really enjoy these streams. I enjoy the, the structure of like the YouTube video. So it, it keeps my week like organized and I know that. Yeah, there's like an order, like a repetition is good. So in whatever form uh, that manifests for you, whatever it is, um, if that's if that means going to university, go for it. Uh, just. Don't accumulate student student death. That's the only thing I would just just run away, uh, run away from it like like it's the plague. But uh, if it's paid for somehow, um, if it turns out to be extremely cheap or free, then uh, then no problem at all. <clears throat> so I also realized that I bought the, the course almost two years ago, but I was only able to work on it. Uh, yeah, no worries. So yeah, I'm still, I'm still offering um, once a month. You know, for the people that that uh, whose time expired instead of once a week. So, so yeah, you're free to submit every every month mm -hmm. until until I'm no longer able to do that. But I should be able to keep going for a, for a couple months at least, a couple more months. <clears throat> So as mentioned last week, she's supposed to be a self-entitled queen of sorts. Not sure if that comes across, but she's also supposed to be related to Eri, Eri, the blue-haired character I made. So I tried to introduce similar shape, uh, shape design for the most part. For feedback, design and if it works. Then I would also like to know about the lighting. Not sure if it falls on her hips like that. I looked up some reference, but I don't think everyone was fading up. So please point out anything in the spot that doesn't work right on. All right. Self entitled queen. <laughs> well, she's got no power. She's. Great. Okay. <clears throat> That's good. So, um, just one thing that I'm not too sure about, like this, uh, the stuff here is like, an opening to the to space or something that's curious maybe just not clear enough like what it is and also like i'm not seeing it here so um and the main reason why i pointed out i mean obviously obviously it's not good if i don't know what it is but also like it it changes the shape language in a way like you introduce kind of like this this lemon, you know, lemon shape language into the mix. And that's not found anywhere else on your design. Mostly have uh, like pointy things. I mean, you do have a lemon shape here, I guess. But you'd probably want more of that. Um, if that's an important part of the, uh, the shape language. If not, then ignore what I've just said. Um, yeah, it looks good. So like I'm looking at the proportions first, you know, it's a character, of course. I'm gonna look at the anatomy and the proportions. All that looks really good. Maybe, um, maybe the, the arms a little, little short. Mostly from the front, like from the back view, that looks, that looks better. It's still, it's still a little short. So, uh, not by much. But she's got long legs, you know, that's more like that relationship that I'm looking at. Uh, the legs and the arm length. Making that a little bit more in line. Just like the hands and the feet, usually they'll be somewhat in line for, for normal characters. If you have like big feet, you gotta have big hands. Uh, vice versa. Long arms, long legs usually. So I would make her her arms maybe just a little longer. 
not much, you know, like just like this much longer by like an inch extra. But I think it would that would make a difference. Um, yeah, other than that, the anatomy looks great. Presentation, like I'm not a fan of the the leg and how that's so close to the background color. If you look at the values here, like it barely bud budges. It's about the same value, so either like it would add a lot a lot of light on here from like a secondary light source could be just good old sheet rim lights. But something to make it um, to separate it from the background color. It could also be just light in the background, you know, so if you just come. So maybe there's a little bit more light at the bottom here. So it's not just like a flat, flat gray. Oops. <laughs> Opposite of what I want to do. So there's somehow like more light down here. <coughs> that would help. Now it's just a problem with this one leg. But since uh, there seems to be some lights in here, I see some lights on the top. It would probably be some light on the top of that leg as well. So that might. Solve your problems. Your value problems. If as a result that leg is a little brighter. Um <clears throat> in any case, yeah, the background here. Probably good to adjust. And also we can't really see like the, the cool effects that you have here on the ground. Yeah, that'd be nice. It'd be nice to, to feature that a little better. Um, other than that, though, the, the, the contrast pretty good. Maybe like here again, like you, if you had like a little bit of light on top of these, I don't know if it's meant to be like some, some sort of shadow or or if it has a volume at all. But it looks like it does. So if you had some some lights landing on some light landing on that to help to help it. Same thing up here. Um, yeah, and then you were talking about the lighting. Like the only thing that looks a little strange would be like these things here. Like why is the light stop at the legs? And probably on the stomach, you would have some light as well. So looking at a character like, let's say a character like this from the side, I'm gonna get chests or so breasts and then like the rib cage pokes out and then goes into the stomach not a whole lot there so it's kind of like a like con con uh, concave curve and then sticks out again at the belly and then goes back in again for the uh the the, 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 the pubis so you're gonna get your legs here so the lights coming from above and it's gonna hit here it's gonna hit a little bit here on top of the chest not so much underneath gonna Hit a little bit on top of the belly, where the belly button is, um, and that's gonna be the, the three like zones that uh, that you'll have the most light. So shoulders, yes. Top of the chest, yes. Uh, maybe a little bit here on the inside, where the rib cage pokes out. Oh boy. Uh, and then again at the belly. But you really feel the rib cage pushing against and then the stomach pushing out down there. And then the same thing on the hips. So top of the hips, here we're gonna get some lights. Uh, front of the legs, a little bit as well. But everything that goes towards the pubis. Um, so everything that's on the inside here, so the abdominal groups, group, there's only one, that is going to be receding away from the light source, and so it's going to get darker. It's rough, but you know, kind of more like that. And then yeah, 
on the on that that leg too you probably have a little bit of highlights just pushing the contrast on like everything that's super dark but it doesn't kind of just disappear <clears throat> mm. yeah so for the colors nah, that's pretty much it overall it's really good it's just like the midsection and the, the the hips area and like the legs also don't have much so you know the top here if you again think of anything that's pointing up to the sky as uh, more likely to receive some lights and then top of the knee here might be might be getting a little bit more um and then top of the foot probably as well And design-wise, I feel like man, maybe it's a little chaotic, like a little, like I've been like, uh, the longer I look at it, the more, or the less the shape language kind of makes sense. It's a little bit of everything. So he gets like, uh, he gets some, some, some spikes, some really narrow spikes. Um, and then you get some, like some cuffs. So some, some like cylindrical shapes, and then you get some almost like lighting you know, lightning, uh, lightning bolt shape here. So a broken spike, it's different than a, like a straight spike. Then you have like this lemon shape in the back. Uh, and then you have like the diamond shape up here, which again, doesn't really repeat other than, than these smaller details, which is nice. But I would try to unify the shape language a little more, maybe like take out some, some, uh, some shapes in there so that it's a little bit more unified. Like maybe instead of having like this broken this broken thing here, it's more like the white ones. I mean, it could be it could be a different color or whatever, but but yeah, maintaining the shape language, I think, it would definitely help uh, unify the design. Otherwise, it tends to look a little a little random. But hold the house. Really cool stuff, Cosmo. <clears throat> Ryan, all right. Working on my final project for art school before university. Going to use everything that I've learned to construct a splash art. Everything at the moment is still very much a placeholder. And I'm trying to paint in values. But please feel free to tear this image apart. Yes, once again. Congratulations to Ryan to uh, being accepted in university. Thanks to his, por thanks to his portfolio. <clears throat> Told you, portfolio is everything. Nothing else matters. Almost nothing else. Um, <clears throat> Oh, and I just want to mention, but um, but anybody that goes to school, um, the ones that always succeed, you know, the ones that are the last ones standing, the one that the ones that find jobs in the industry and then end up, you know, becoming professional artists, are the ones that <clears throat> always do, always go above and beyond what the school is asking of them. So like the the assignments for the school, it's almost like you should you should do them, yeah, of course, as best as you can, but once you're done, it's time for your your personal art now. The stuff that that you want to make. That's not an assignment, and you always have to be working over time. Um, otherwise, you're gonna be like like the sad statistics that uh, that doesn't make it. So just keep working hard. I know you will, but just as an extra little push. All right, so um, first thing here, um, composition. So when you have like a character right down the middle of a piece, it tends to to look a little bit more like a like a portrait, like a portrait piece, a little more static, a little bit less dynamic. Um, so that's why if you want something that's a little more dynamic, like the, the rule of thirds, always 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 nice for that. Uh, it forces you to to not have symmetry. <clears throat> 
So I would recommend it, especially if you're working on splash art, something that's going to be, yeah, like a bigger illustration, not necessarily like a, like a portrait. Uh, trying to feature like a character in some some sort of an action, doing something cool with like a cool environment, cool effects. Uh, usually splash art are pretty dynamic. And so this grid here is going to help you. Uh, it's going to force you to do that in a way. So if the character was here instead, <clears throat> the composition. So let's say we arrange this a bit. And also you'll notice that a lot of splash art, they don't, they don't feature like the whole character, right? The character will be kind of cropped. Uh, it makes again, things a little bit more dy dynamic. Like if you're watching a movie uh, and like there's an action, an action scene, usually you don't see the whole character. You'll see like maybe like the top or like just part of the leg or uh, it just, it feels a little more intimate and it's, it feels more dynamic. Like you're closer to the action. <clears throat> so maybe the leg here, we don't need to see it. Maybe, uh, maybe the shot is more like that. And then this way follows a little bit more the rule of thirds, more or less, does it? Transform, uh, uh, oh no, uh, 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 uh. I forgot how to set, <laughs> I forgot how to make the, um, the grid visible, damn it. Um, Ah, son of a gun, whatever. <clears throat> Just eyeballing it, I think it looks a little, a little more. Yeah, it feels a little better. Feels more dynamic. It's right on one of those intersections, and uh, <clears throat> this way the characters kind of moving in that direction, but not looking in that direction as well. So it still kind of leaves leaves this open for for action, like she's maybe looking looking over her shoulder or something to something that's happening in the back there. Some people like running after her. Cause she stole something. Um, and this way she's in the front, so she's going to be the focal point, the clear focal point. And then, yeah. And then the eye can kind of travel to the back, see what, do, what's going on back there. And it uh, definitely feels a lot more, a lot more, really, yeah, feels more dynamic essentially. Uh, when it comes to your values so far, so good. Maybe like avoid like pitch black. Shapes like this, pitch black silhouettes. There's always going to be some light here. So like, just keep the blacks for something that's for for um, like as an accent, you know, like in, in the crevices and in the corners maybe where it's not there's not as much light. And on the characters overall, don't don't use that too much as a uh, as a value. It's more uh, it's more like an extreme value to use. <laughs> I look like a bird. I don't know. I didn't notice, but nice. <laughs> and maybe the pose is a little, a little weird. Uh, I'm guessing she, her, her left arm is not there yet, right? We got the right arm here. And that one is kind of saluting us. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah, um, just be careful about uh, the anatomy here, torso. Torso, neck, flopping onto that, front of the torso. Make sure stuff's not sticking out too much. Uh, then you're gonna have your other shoulder somewhere here. Yeah, the rest of the body looks good. That looks all right. All right, all right. Um, <clears throat> but what I was mostly referring to when it comes to the pose is like where she's looking. It's just weird. Like you're going in one direction, you're looking back, but then <laughs> looking to the front. Like make up your mind. You know, which way do you want to? Which way do you want to watch? Which way do you want to look? So if she's looking. If she's tilting her head back, usually you point your head to where you want to look. 
uh, unless you're static and you don't want to move and it's just your eyes and I go kind of to the side, you know, uh, suspicious of somebody. But in her case, I think it's the more natural um, direction for her gaze would be where the head is pointing. So, like back there. Again, like she's trying to escape somebody that's running after her. And yeah, just be careful about, uh, be not careful, but be mindful about the, um, the values in the foreground values in the background so far it's nice you know you don't have too much contrast in the back that feels like character feels very very close to us the background feels very far nice keep it that way hope that helps right <clears throat> yeah i like the uh, i like the tilted ground too adds uh adds to the dynamism very nice moving on to navina What's up, Navina? I sure did. Thank you very much. This is my new original character. She is Forest Witch slash Shaman called Emerald. Mm. Make three versions. <clears throat> I'd like to hear your feedback. Also, please let me know if the anatomy is okay. Or if I need to fix something. What's confusing me is her, is her right knee. I did construction first, but now when I made a sketch, somehow... It looks off. I'm not sure if it's on the right, on the right spots. Okay. A right knee. Right. Uh, her right knee. Her right knee. Oh yeah. <clears throat> have, uh, have I seen this one? I feel like I did. Yeah, you've shown it before. Maybe not in that state. Am I crazy? Or maybe she's just like, she's got a face very similar to another one. Either way. Um, so let's take a look at the uh, the anatomy here. So, <clears throat> belly, 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 glutes, back, uh, pubis here, leg, knee. And then uh, this one here. Yeah, maybe. Well, actually, it looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, since most of it is covered, I, th I think it's quite, uh, quite spot on what you did here. Yeah, so like if we had like x-ray vision zoom, that's where we could kind of see through right that's about right so good proportions the knee is uh, yeah, maybe the knee could be could be shifted um towards the front a little more like it's right now it's kind of pointing up but uh but in reality it'd probably be more like like this like slightly pointing down so uh, not a big change at all but <clears throat> and then the only thing maybe I would adjust is like this, uh, like the contour here, like the, uh, her skirt, um, cause, cause then this suggests maybe like a different silhouette. Um, her body can totally fit in there. It's just like that this maybe suggests that she's like wider than she is. Um, but like in a place where it wouldn't really, or it wouldn't necessarily make sense. So yeah, if the... Maybe like the things that are kind of flapping out here, Oop. but if it reads as like it's it's um, it's resting on her leg, and the leg and the leg anyway like will be in front of all of that. So all I'm trying to say, I guess, is you want to make sure you have kind of like this this line visible. And here maybe it's it's a little too far out. Like you you really want to suggest where that leg, that right leg, is <clears throat> with the silhouette. And then um, anatomy wise, uh, the only change other than, than the knee would be her right, um, excuse me, her left arm 
Uh, it's a little a little far back here. It makes her, her shoulders really wide. Um, and that would make for a pretty strange skeleton. Like, even if you have, like, a little bit more mass, a little bit extra BMI, um, like, it's going to accumulate in certain areas, but it won't deform your, your, your skeleton. And so, like, unless, you know, unless her ribcage is, like, super wide and, like, the shoulders, the, the bone for the shoulders are, like, this wide here, um, more likely it would... more like that a little more towards the center closer to the neck that got joints here and another one here neck right down the middle and that that feels a lot better now kind of just pushing that shoulder in and bringing everything else along with it As if nothing happened. <clears throat> so same idea for the, these other ones too. The right shoulder looks nice. It's the right one, that, uh, the left one, excuse me, that's that's a little too far out. Um, yeah, other than that, the anatomy looks great. Very nicely done. Which one do I prefer? <laughs> I think she reads more as a shaman with the skull on the head. Like it's more clear. Just because, yeah, you associate, you know, you associate shamans with like dealing with stuff like the dead and. Uh, and, and animals and like, sure there, there's one here but maybe not as visible especially with uh with such a like a busy skirt there's a lot of a lot of details in there so maybe kind of gets lost a little bit here in the hands again it's close to a lot of detail so it kind of it kind of uh it, it kind of disappear Z disappears in the detail and the noise The only thing with this one here, which is my favorite, I think, um, but the only thing that I would adjust with the design um, is kind of the the, the the patterns that the leaves create versus the skirt. So you have like two distinct element, uh, visual elements there, uh, maybe a little too different. So I think if you blended the two, that'd be nicer. So just introducing like repetition. But like spreading out that repetition so that's not just repeated here and then nowhere else you know when when we talk about repetition you want if it's repeated here you want it to be repeated in some other places as well so you know if you have all these small details these small leaves um maybe you have those those down here too ones here on the shoulders they're kind of like the transition between the, the small ones and the medium ones and the, the large ones um, then then I would feel better right so kind of have this uh, this this gradient of like small leaves medium leaves and then bigger leaves those would be here maybe uh, the, the ones down there maybe it would be the bigger leaves uh, and in the same way you could share them <clears throat> from the skirt to the <coughs> excuse me to the top of the body as well so maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know, like uh, on the inside here, maybe she's got some longer ones or maybe like on the side of the arms here, almost like acting as like a, like a shoulder cover, something like that. Um, yeah, kind of just unifying the shape language a little bit, a little, a little more. And one thing I would stay away from is like these dark, uh, it's bold, dark lines. Um, if you're gonna, yeah it just attracts a lot of attention. So I would avoid these as much as you can. 
it's a lot better to just draw this trap this way, just with line art. It's gonna be a lot, lot more aesthetic to look at. And I think it'd be cool to have maybe those, those longer, longer leaves. I don't know if they're leaves, but you know, like longer details, whatever, whatever it is, doesn't really matter. Maybe, maybe hanging here. Maybe this is only like two or something. Uh, again, just to to help unify the shape language. That helps. <clears throat> Pretty cool. Sarah. Ooh. Yes, I saw this. Nicely done. I love the um <clears throat> love this here. Like you feel the almost looks like a like those those slightly tran translucent gems, you know? The light shining from from the inside, like the dome casting a little bit of shadow. Oh, nice. Very. Um let's read the let's read the, what we have here. So I hope your vacation was uh, Yep, it was uh, it was great. Thank you so much. Um, so for today's critique, I decided to upload my most recent pieces. I'm really proud of what I was able to achieve with the term one classes, but also your feedback and the feedback from the people on the Discord server. Uh, you're all pretty amazing, and I'm so happy to be on this journey. Awesome. Awesome to hear, Sarah. Um, we're happy to have you too. Please take a look at my work and tell me if there's any big issues that I need to work on immediately or if I'm on the right track. Let's go. So let's start with this one here. Yeah, that was, that was nice. Very nice lighting. Beautiful render. Um, I love that um, that watermelon color palette. It's always reminds me of watermelon. I love watermelon. It's it looks delicious. Uh, the only thing maybe that I would recommend here is to uh, increase the saturation. Maybe they get some of these tiles, like the ones that are closer to us. So go a little more. A little more saturated, maybe. Again, everything that's more saturated always tends to 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 to, to feel like it's closer. Everything that's desaturated feels like it's farther away. It gets recessed in the background more. So maybe this one dome, since it's closer, maybe it has a little bit more saturation. And the light from the the light from the sun, anyway, is gonna it's gonna it's gonna warm up that saturation too. For the same reason that you know in a night shot feels pretty desaturated because there's not as much light with more light usually more saturation until there's too much light and then it just goes to white but uh if you're in the sweet spot you're gonna get some nice saturated saturated colors here that might might be a nice complement to that to those windows just in some in some regions maybe maybe just in like the cracks Side here, maybe just the highlights are desaturated. Anyways, I think a little, a little extra green here helps helps complement the red in the highlights at least. But anyways, other than that, that's good. Feels like it's glowing from within. From within, nice, very nice. <clears throat> this one too. I've seen, I've seen this one before. Very, very nice. Um, like, if anything, I would maybe go more towards that because here you have some real nice contrast. A lot of like a, a lot of different colors. But mostly the contrast, it's really it makes it pop. You know, you look at this from a, you look at this from a distance, and like the face stands out a lot against the like the darker hat. This one maybe not as much. And so I would just maybe like crank up the lights in here. Hopefully you have them on separate on separate layers. Uh, but like uh, like the blue light maybe. That's not blue. That's green. 
maybe that's a little more intense and so I'm like on, on the side here or part of the face maybe some of these mushrooms and then on the inside maybe it's a little warmer because of the eyes and the hair on the inside here a little bit more lights right next to the eyes and as you get away from it kind of fades out But anything really to just increase the contrast. Inside of the nose here. The cheeks. The lip, uh, the, uh, the lips here. That's too much, but but now you know, like the face is a little more, a little bit more revealed this way from a, from a distance. And so it's kind of like that that initial. Um, <clears throat> the first impression that you want to maybe crank up the, the contrast and, and make it a little more striking. But the other two, the other two, uh, they are quite striking already, so... <clears throat> start to add like some overall glow in here maybe that's not gonna work at all let's try it Contrast, contrasts, the more, the better, but not too much. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, like maybe with the back, the background too, like the heads kind of, I'm spending a lot of time on here, but, uh, but contrast is important, you know, like presentation is everything, the first, first impression is everything. That's what's gonna make people stop scrolling on social media, spend some extra time, give it a like. So. Too much. Yeah, I know this is not like the super dark mood that that you that you had before, but. But helping separate the character from the background, I think helps. Maybe just like locally in the back here. Again, just contrast, right? Uh, this one though, this one, nice. <clears throat> Maybe I wouldn't go as dark here. Like all the colors kind of, kind of look the same. Uh, maybe keeping that a little brighter, just a little brighter. Since you have a lot of light in the scene, and the skin's quite quite bright, suggesting that this is a, a pretty strong light source in here. And when you have a strong light source, there's a lot of bounce, a lot of light bouncing around, and so maybe just brightening up those shadows just a tad. Here too, like the face, you know, the light will bounce off of the face, boing, and then back onto the the inside of the hat, probably, at least a little bit, so you could you can warm that up maybe. Not too much. Not too much, Mark. But, uh, but yeah, anyways. Uh, uh, that, was, that was good. Really good. Great colors. Good contrast. Just like that one here. 
great colors, good contrast. <clears throat> this one was maybe missing a little bit of that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so things to um, to keep in mind moving forward. Uh, yeah, like I would, you have like really, really pretty, pretty damn good uh, fundamentals. Uh, I feel like the the one thing that maybe you're not pushing as much is like the the design, like going and doing like like wilder things, stuff that we haven't seen before. Like this looks great, but uh, like it doesn't seem that unusual. Like that hat, you know, like it it feels familiar, and so maybe not as striking as a result. Um, this is pretty damn different. I don't know why I keep thinking that it's just a head coming out of the coming out of the ground, but it's not right, or is it? Or it's just like the the portrait of like a mushroom lady. So yeah, so in that case, I think I could bring that light maybe a little bit lower here. That's pretty different. So <laughs> this maybe not this one. Uh, that's that's different too. But again, maybe if uh, what could it be? Be more different and maybe it's like some some crazy some crazy levels maybe it's like a bunch of bunch of these these domes like stacked up top of one another like i, I don't know that was it you uh i feel like the sketches were a little wilder maybe maybe not maybe i'm thinking of somebody else but uh yeah pushing the design elements just just different things thing things that people haven't necessarily seen before mixing like different different things from two um two eras maybe like something from the future something from the past or something that, that has like really low tech something with high tech mixing maybe um yeah these are just interesting combinations of shapes maybe of, of colors um it's really good i'm just i feel like that could be even more striking in your designs designs could be pushed a lot more and make them a lot more interesting but other than that like good line quality good construction good uh, good anatomy good use of colors so there's a lot going a lot going for you here so yes definitely on the right track really looking forward to see what you create next uh oh did i forget to get question for this yeah all right elijah um <clears throat> more clothes i think that these honestly turned out pretty good but there are certain places especially on the guy in the coat that i think i didn't quite pull off correctly also in the bottom guy also is the bottom guy right you can tell <laughs> thing i'm trying to think Bottom right. <clears throat> yeah, here. Ooh. Oh, that's a that's a tricky reference. Um. So yeah, I guess let's start with this one. Um. <clears throat> not that it's a bad exercise, but like this is a what I would categorize as a bad reference. It's just it's a fabric that's so uncommon, and it just it the light on it behaves like so differently compared to like a, like a regular cotton or something. That it's more of a like a, more of like a, a, an execution challenge rather than a, rather than like a, yeah, something that's going to add to your visual library because it's a lot harder to make sense of that. And like try to draw this from imagination. Gonna have a hard time. So, not that it's a waste of time, but, but you always get a lot more out of out of references that you'll that you'll be able to use in the future. This kind of fabric, unlikely. I mean, it's it's unusual. I been a while since I've seen some, since I've seen something like this. I 
like every time that you can't really make sense of the logic behind like what's happening with, behind what you're looking at like where is the light coming from here you have some some light coming from the side here clearly and like the side of the arm is, is illuminated but then you have like a fold like that and then and then some lights right underneath so maybe the light's coming from above a, a bit more then why is there light on this side like this looks fake Ooh. very strange this uh, this reference so personally speaking like i would recommend that you just don't worry about that because if you can't understand the logic behind what you're looking at then there's really no way that your brain can store the information it's like hearing like somebody else talk in a foreign language that you have no idea that you don't know at all are you going to be able to retain some of the words hell no you don't understand anything it doesn't there's nothing that you can kind of make logic of in there so the same same here oh so that being said let's look at the other ones <clears throat> mm, that's much better all the folds behave in a in a logical way it's those are fabrics that you'll probably reuse in the future and pretty common <coughs> Much better study this one. A uh, much better reference. This one too. Um, so let's focus on these. <clears throat> yeah, overall that looks really good. It's a tricky one. It's another tricky one. I mean, it's it's good, you know. It's just like a lot of extra fabric here. So even in the reference, it looks maybe a little a little noisy. Uh, so obviously, you know, when you draw it, it will be the same. But um, yeah, overall, maybe like maybe not as shaded as a uh, maybe not shaded as much as the cylinder as uh, as the references. Here feels rounder. And looking at like the uh, the highlights here, you can get this straight line there. Maybe you could reinforce that, push that a bit more. It's really those big those big hits of light that you want to identify first. And looking at the the contrast between like the highlights, like what's that? What's the brightest in here? It's this right here, like the flap of his uh in front of the coat the shoulder highlight is not as bright but here you get like almost oops if i use the right brush mode there we go and on the shoulder is quite darker in your case about the same so yeah you could go a little darker here so that you have that contrast between the two so it feels like one just catches more light and then that influences how we read it as a volume same thing here with, uh, with the legs for example if you get a little bit more highlight on the inside of the leg there with that light it's more directly <coughs> excuse me and then less as you go down as you go down the leg a little bit less here more up there and then looking at the other leg similar story a little bit more on the sides and then you kind of Kind of it gets dimmer and dimmer as you go down. So, looking at the, yeah your highlights and like the range of highlights that you have all around. Um, but it's mostly that. It's mostly just values because your because the folds here look good. You did a good job. And then here, um, skirt looks pretty good. For the shirt, just be a little more, um, a little more flowy in your lines. Like uh, like here, for example, like you get get that nice nice curve, nice curve here, nice curve, curve, curve. Everything is curved, but it all flows into one another. Um, and then here, maybe that's a little bit a little more broken. 
so even on the even on the shoulder here so this is the shoulder right there and then everything starts from there that's the tension point so it kind of starts straight from here and then it curves when it gets to the sleeve starts here and then curves starts there and then curves and then in the armpit so a lot of tension <coughs> a lot of tension around the focal point no, the, the, the tension point, excuse me. Um, so this, the folds are going to be a little straighter there, like right next to it. But as they go away from that, they quickly start to curve and follow the um, follow the underneath uh, the the underlying volume uh, that's that is resting on here. So if we do the same thing again here, the shoulder, and then tension, and then it eases off. Tension, and then it eases off. Tension and then it chills. Here the fold's gonna be a lot smaller, more tight, and then it opens up as it gets towards the armpit. Same thing here. Just more flow. Kinda like kinda like water. Be mindful of your of your references mostly i think that's the most important find stuff that you're like oh yeah i could totally use that for for this character those are the best references you know stuff that you that you would use if you were to draw like your own characters let's say your, your character is like in just wearing a t-shirt and you're looking for a t-shirt to figure out what the fold of that of that character would look like those are the best references because you're going to use them so find find some of those instead So weird man. It looks fake. The light makes no sense. You get some light on the side here. But then his face doesn't really have any light on that side. The pants don't either. I was like, where the hell is the light coming from here? Or maybe it's just super reflective and it's really dim in this room. I don't know. Very strange. Very strange material. <clears throat> My eyes are bamboozled. Um, Varia. All right. I hope you're having a nice weekend as well. And uh, thank you. Yes, did have a good time. I'm currently following the term three anatomy two classes. This is really difficult class. So I tried taking it, taking it slow by drawing the muscles on an existing skeleton. Could you give advice and critique on this? I'm gonna work on trying to draw the muscles in perspective, but I need a little more practice and time for that. Yeah. So good, uh, good idea. You know, you start with. The body in, in no particular with no particular foreshortening just understanding the structure first and after that you can like when that becomes more comfortable then you can start to introduce foreshortening perspective and all that stuff all that all that more complicated stuff let's pour some more tea Yum, 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 <clears throat> Right. Also, massive respects for all the artists out there that memorized this, because <laughs> I think for me the shoulders are a bit off, but it could be the skeleton pose. I don't know. <coughs> yeah, but it's, I mean, it's no different than like, a, let's say, a mechanic that learns how to, to build an engine from scratch, you know, or learn to disassemble an entire engine or an entire car for that matter and then put it back together it's the same idea it's just yeah, just gotta memorize it and after that it's it becomes a lot easier and the more pieces that you have memorized the easier the other pieces are to memorize at the beginning it's just like this really really heavy wall and then the future walls after you kind of pass that big one they get smaller and smaller and smaller so it gets easier with time Um, 
Also tried to do a little perspective drawing since I do not know much about anatomy yet. I tried keeping the shape simple. Oh, this looks good. This looks very good. Um. Yeah, the only thing I'd say here maybe is just the, like the placement of the nips, um, and maybe the the chest here. You know, like one way to think about this is a. Uh, <clears throat> So you have the shoulders here, like from the side view. Shoulders. Head. Uh, and chests. Whatever. Uh, and if you're looking at it from below, essentially our point of view, looking at this, and it's this dude from, from below and seeing him kind of get away from us. Uh, <clears throat> If we're looking at it from the sides, you know, we have the shoulders here at this level. Shoulders right here. And then we have the chest maybe going to be down there. Something like that. So, different level. Right? But if we look at this from this angle, now suddenly, like, the chest is here. And it's almost like you rotate the image. And uh, instead of looking at it from the front, for example, like somebody looking at it from the front here, like, head on at eye level, we'll see the shoulders much above, like much higher than the chest. But if you're looking at it from below, you see all of them on like the same line almost, right? So you're going to have the like the nipples might be here and at the top of the shoulders might be might be back there. But from this point of view, it's all on the same line. <gasps> mm, interesting. And so that gives us an idea of what to what to draw here as well. So if the nipples are here on this line, and from this point of view, from below, we see them about on the same line, lining up with the shoulder, like the peak of the shoulder. And that would indicate that the shoulder is a little lower. And you get more, something more like this as a result. I'm not saying that this is the exact angle. Maybe it's not that, that strong of an angle. But, uh, but the shoulders, the top of the shoulders and where the nipples are would be a lot more aligned from that that uh, that perspective. The chest might be more a little higher as a result. Shoulders looking like they're a little lower. And then this makes it feel like we're we're much lower than than this character. <clears throat> and looking at the same thing here. Mm. Like if the chest uh, I mean looking at the same same idea here, if the line continues there. Yeah, and this in this case, we can kind of see a lot of the neck, but let's say the character had his his uh, his head maybe pushed back a bit, and like the All right, not a good example for this one, but uh, I think it would be a little more accurate if we if the head was slightly bigger and maybe we could see a little bit less of the neck as a result, because the neck will be kind of hidden behind behind this line there. From the top, there's a big distance. But if I go like this, this then shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until there's not much left. <clears throat> so some slight adjustments. The legs look great. much uh, for you here maybe it's a little bit more mass in the shoulder muscle and the delts and the deltoids here so it's like a little thicker of a muscle it's not like like a sheet of paper it has a little more thickness so maybe you can make that slightly more rounded here but um overall maybe like the trap trapezes here also like the slope a little bit less intense 
more like a nice natural slope you know like rather than a straight line because otherwise going from the shoulder to here like it would be like you'd have like this fat thick neck full muscles but that's quite rare <clears throat> make him a little a little more shape fitting for a neck but then that's uh this looks great you did a really good job here yeah mm-hmm mm -hmm. like you can you can see also this is not like a correction or anything it's just like more like an addition for style but you can see underneath the underneath the sternum there's nothing here right uh right below the rib cage so it's kind of like this soft soft area and as a result there's no bones kind of pushing on the surface of the of the skin and so it kind of tends to go in a bit and so you could could uh illustrate that by a little bit of a, a little shadow here right below the rib cage and then the stomach kind of sticks out again not that you have to at all but such nice muscles that i couldn't help myself all right <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Hope that helps. Um, Joe, you're up. Finally. What's up? Everything's good, man. So if I got to clean up the lines, it was stayed rather sketchy. How can I dial this in? I looked at, I uh, took your suggestions to enlarge certain accessories to enhance the silhouette, but I don't know if I, what do you get? Yeah, the cable is definitely the cable definitely feels better this way. I don't know if it's thicker or maybe it's just like the the bold black color that it has, but now like it influenced the silhouette a lot more. So clearly visible. Uh, so yeah, that that looks nice. Uh, Like overall, the detail, the, the the level of detail feels pretty good. Like where it matters the most, like up here. Like everything is big enough. I feel like it's it reads it reads pretty nice. It's more like a more like down here that starts to be a little bit more a little fuzzier. When you look at it quickly, maybe it's a matter of um uh, maybe it's like a matter of adjusting the the values too a little bit. Mm. Like the fact the fact that you don't go that dark um, tends to flatten the shapes a bit more. Then, uh, then you might want. And so, like on the inside here, with that, uh, like thinking of uh, thinking of these as just simple, simple boxes, right? Got it's, it's not a box. It's it's a more complex box, but whatever. Kind of like a box that has a little bit of a cap, like a rounded cap this way. In the, in any case, <clears throat> like if the if the light, uh, like where's the light coming from here? The front it looks like it's coming kind of like at a slight angle, but coming from the front mostly. So that box, like the top of the box, yeah, here that would be a little brighter. Down there, not so much because it's not receiving the light as directly. And then the side here be quite dark because there's no light shooting from the side so you just want to adjust kind of your uh your shading to represent that a little bit better because right now like the two faces like the front and the side are the same value and that just that flattens the volume a lot and so maybe on the side here everything is slightly darker Including all these details. Same thing here on the side of that, that cone shape. That other cone shape on the inside of this leg as well. It's the same, same type of volume facing the same direction. And then introducing a little bit of shadow. 
uh, you know, like this this big kind of like a bowl shape. It's probably gonna cast a little shadow on on everything that's underneath, <clears throat> at least a little bit. So can push all these details back by lowering the the brightness. And then, like, this part here doesn't get as busy anymore because it's kind of receding in the in the shadows. Um, and so, like, the noise doesn't, you know, the noise and the detail doesn't bother as much. But um, but what was happening before is, like, all these little details there. Like, all that grabs the attention. Like, the trim here, the thickness of that trim there, that line in the center, like, these small details here. All of that it just introduces a lot of noise. And noise is... Um, yeah, it, I mean, it's very different than the rest of the stuff that you have here. They're nice, clean surfaces. So whenever you don't have that, it kind of stands out as a result. And then this area standing out maybe a little too much. So now bring that light back in here. Copy this. And the front. Those legs. And then a little glue. Maybe more bright light. Glow is tricky when you have such a bright image overall. Because you need the contrast for the glow to, to look like it's bright. Um, so maybe darkening the background might help in this case. For presentation's sake, let's try it before I brighten this up. Mm. Okay, overall darkening everything. Come on, selection, you can do it. You can do it. All right, good enough. Now this thing glows. Now it'll really glow. Maybe that's too much, but uh, <clears throat> just a little quick tip for glows. You gotta have that range. Um, yeah. So when it comes when it comes to the when it came to the detail, it was uh, yeah, just every. Making everything like a, increasing the scale on, on literally everything. So let's say you have like this, this, uh, this little thing right here, making that bigger, so that it reads better from a distance. So like a small box, maybe it's a, it's a bigger box now. Same with these, maybe they go they go all the way instead. There, it's like a, a bolder a bolder shape easier to spot maybe like these the the, the grills in between or the yeah, space in between here maybe maybe these are thicker and there are fewer fewer of them um, it's that that kind of stuff so making just enlarging everything um Because again, like you're looking at the side of these screws, they're like you know you can imagine like a screw is not that not that big, so these details must be must be incredibly small, um, and it's just like in contrast with this big surface here that that is kind of mostly void of more void of details. Uh, it's weird to have other shapes right next to it that are so detailed in comparison. So just like trying to line up that, that like the scale of those details a bit more. Like another example, you know, maybe like. A, the, uh, the thickness here, like the, the pipe around the eye, maybe it could be much thicker. Like 
double the thickness. Just again so that it's easier to read it. It's the same detail, it's just now we can clear we can more clearly see it. That's kind of what it meant. Um, and yeah, in, in, in your shading, I think I would go, I would, I would go a little bit darker too, uh, in, in the shadow. So like back here, you know, go a little darker push the contrast a bit more it just helps reveal the, the 3d 3d uh, look of those volumes and uh, it reads as yeah as less flat as a result well, that helps especially like for the gold yeah I think like if you want this bright of a highlight, I think you just need to go a lot, a lot darker in some of these uh, elsewhere on the shape. So it reads more. It reads more as metal. Again, contrast, 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 contrast. More. Well, that helps, man. Moving on to Aurora. Let's see those bods. Yeah, the only thing with um, like it, um, I don't know what you were using for this, for like um, like SketchUp or something. What you, <clears throat> the only the only uh, the only shading that I would consider. If it's if it's coming from a 3D software, is something that um, that is physics based, right? So where you have bounce light like stuff that you would see in nature, like the the, the real behavior of light and shadows. Uh, there's a lot of 3D software, like cheaper ones, like for example um, Google SketchUp, that just they don't calculate any of that stuff. They don't calculate like light bounces and or any of that, or there's no ambient occlusion, uh, which is incredibly important uh, to make something look like real um, so yeah, the only like real renderers like uh, like Houdini or uh, Corona or, or like some in-game in-game um, in-game engines like Unreal would do that uh, Marmoset would do that too anyways <clears throat> I uh, hope that you are also doing well, uh, Aurora. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'd like some feedback on my latest anatomy studies. I tried applying another approach to getting anatomy done by doing silhouette and slowly carving out the anatomy. Um, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. At least I feel so. But I'm not sure if it's as good as approach. It's good an approach since I've only now tried it. Carving out. Let me reread that again. Doing a silhouette and slowly carving out the anatomy. That's why Joe. This is fake lighting, so of course it looks fake. <clears throat> I also, I've also gotten into the habit of turning my study drawings into quick arts. However, I've been struggling with more dynamic poses. I like really cool stuff. Any tips on approaching those? <clears throat> uh, to be fair, uh, to be on at least personally speaking, um, I don't find like dynamic pose any more uh, dynamic poses any more beautiful to look at than than more static poses. You know, like it's a great pose. There's a lot of nice aspects about it um, this or versus someone that would be like running or something um, so what I recommend is that you get really really good at drawing simple poses first just so that you can really 
really build like good visual library around around correct proportions, proportions that are not foreshortened, and uh, and then it makes after that it makes the makes character and poses a lot easier to to tackle. But it's normal that's yeah, that you're struggling more with dynamic poses. It's a harder, <laughs> so that's probably always going to be the case. And like you can always explore, you know, try try different things. But I would say like until like drawing characters like this from imagination from your own visual library without using references. Uh, unless you can do that, then then working on dynamic poses, probably not as useful. In my opinion. Um, So I'm trying to to understand what you're what you're talking about here. Starting with the silhouette and then carving out the anatomy like this. So you started with this, and then use that to create your line art. Am I getting this right? Um, if so, that's completely fine. You know. Um, but like another way to do it would be through simple construction. So it's just, I think it's just that that initial getting something on the canvas that you can then refine. Uh, I think that's the hurdle for a lot of people. And uh, yeah, sometimes if it's less intimidating for you to just go like Bleh! and then and then kind of refine that, that's fine too. Um, what I recommend, since there's more structure to it and it's easier to in the future like pose yourself you know without using references is construction so like using simple shapes simple volumes um but after yeah that that also is not super intimidating because it's it's just simple simple volume so you start with like head chin rib cage shoulders torso chest hips <clears throat> and then and then you can refine that but yeah um in either cases you know you start with something that's pretty rough that's not the final result and then and then you refine you polish and so it's the same logic in a way if that if you prefer that yeah, completely free it's just that once again like this is harder to imagine when you're not looking at the character standing when you have a little bit more um uh, foreshortening going on so let's say you know you have a character that goes like this <laughs> all right so how is that like you draw the shoulder and then and then the fingers and then it's like trying to carve out the anatomy from that's a lot a lot trickier i want to be like all right well that's the shoulder back there and then i guess that's the palm here and then thumb and then finger versus if you just constructed it with basic shapes you know where you have the shoulder back there the arm coming towards us the cylinder the palm of the hand which is kind of just like a box the thumb and then the fingers which are also themselves just cylinders and just I and mean, this is a complete mess but uh it's just logically speaking like the way that you construct it just there's more logic to it I feel like this is the better the better process to uh, to adopt, but um, but I've done this myself quite a bit when I was uh, when I was younger, when I was working at Blizzard, when I was working prior to Blizzard. So it's not like it's a bad a bad technique. It worked for me for many years. So it's whatever you prefer. But this will go a longer way just saying <laughs> hmm. 
very nice very nice studies um and yeah like uh, turning your studies into finished finished pieces highly recommend that keeps the fun <coughs> that keeps the fun going that's exactly what i used to do too but i still do um yeah, I'd recommend it. This way you get some sort of ownership. It's not like it was, it's not just a study. You had some input into the final, the final result. But at the same time, you learned a bunch of stuff. Perfect exercise. Uh, and then for this guy. Um, of course, so everything here looks really good. Maybe you can have those two legs kind of overlap a little bit more like these. This one in front, that one kind of sliding in the back. Maybe a little bit more of that. So it looks like two volumes, one in front of the other. Um, and then I think it would just be like maybe the legs. The legs feel like they're a little floaty. Whereas this one here really feels like boom, planted on the ground, foot flat on the floor. And it's in big parts because of the gesture. So you have the leg kind of going this way, going, and then this one going there, and then kind of like the foot. It's kind of like you feel the you feel the weight on the knee. It it almost like creates this this bow shape um, that you're kind of missing here a little bit. Knee goes, uh, knee goes out, heel goes in, and then the foot sticks out. <laughs> it's not a good sketch at all, but, uh, but yeah, a little bit more of that. All right, goes in and then out. A little bit more. These are great. These are really good. Very nicely done. Um, maybe, maybe just like a, the the middle one here, the uh, the um, uh, the picture us major, a little a little short, uh, vertically speaking. Like it would it would be this whole this whole length right there. Kind of going like that, and then back up into the arm. And you can see that curve right here that would connect just like that. So in your case, I think it's just like, yeah, that lower part here, like they go up straight away, but they would, they would attach a little bit wider before they go back up and then kind of flow nicely into the abdominal group. Otherwise, very nice. Very nice. What the hell, Sorora? Moving on to... Aye. <clears throat> what up? Alright, alright, alright. So what we got here. So for the past weeks, I've been caught up in, uh, with family funeral. Ah, oh, man, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. Uh, the COVID side effects took me out for a few weeks, a few days as well. And my plan said that I can't post or leak the commission yet, as it's for a surprise or a milestone. Hence, I got nothing to pass for the past few, nothing to uh, yeah, to show for the past few weeks, or at least nothing of significant amount. The first big to the right was an entry to a VTuber fan art contest. Since uh, and since the VTuber herself liked it, she commissioned to do two more. Ooh, hell yeah, awesome. Uh, not that important, but if you got. Any critique, then I highly appreciate it. First pick on the right. That was good. Crazy proportions. <laughs> but, uh, it's kind of believable, like it works. Maybe the only, 
Maybe the only thing would be like this, how this goes into like the tip of the shoulder. Uh, usually it would go, usually it would have like the, uh, let's see, have the shoulder here. Chest. Chest muscle. Clavicle. Um, and then the breast would be like a slightly smaller version. It would kind of lead into the chest, uh, the, the side of the chest muscle, and then and then into the shoulder. So you you would have kind of that break in the line, um, where you would see the chest muscle and then the breast hanging much lower than that. And then you can have if they're pushed if they're supported. Then you can still have a little bit of a line there. But uh, yeah, maybe more of a slightly better structure in that corner but anyways overall it's pretty good uh... so finally uh, i'm able to get back into studying again this time i tried to improve on muscular anatomy only showing some parts i'm doing good the rest of the pieces were done in a rush just as warm up before doing commission so it's not kind of a good quality you could take on the muscular anatomy more yeah yep 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 yeah because you have you have really good taste you know in colors and and, and how you arrange the light um, so really your your main weakness your main weakness is just anatomy and so if you fix that like you'll be you'll be pumping out commissions left and right and you'll have too many that you can't that you can't keep up So, anatomy, let's go. <clears throat> yeah, so for example, like this one here. Uh, chest, rib cage. So we probably have like a little bit of the side of the rib cage here sticking out before it goes in for the stomach. And the rib cage will be, so have your sternum here, like looking x-ray. And then going down into the ribs and then back to the back to the back attaching at the spine so like that part here would kind of be sticking out a bit uh, it wouldn't be as narrow towards the top and at the bottom here let's see you have your, uh, <clears throat> your hips something like this spine sacrum hip bone somewhere around there and here you have the Gluteus medius, or in the back, gluteus maximus, stretching all around the joints. Then you have the legs kind of taken over from here. So, maybe a bit more of an overlap here. And a slightly different shape. For the, the glutes to allow for all of this structure here so back which is medius maximus and then the leg And in the back here, you're gonna have the, the tailbone. So it kind of, actually, that curve wasn't quite right. Tailbone's gonna push this out here, and it's gonna create more of like this this flat, this pointiness to the to the glutes in the back here, at the peak. So a little bit more like that. Um, Here for the shoulder, shoulder a little, a little longer. Usually, you know, it goes, it literally goes all the way to the half, the halfway point of the, uh, 
of the forearm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ugh. A little bit longer. Here. Triceps and anyway, ah, oh, the curvy, the lats sliding underneath that side of the body here, down to the sacrum. And here you would have your um, rotator cuff groups, uh, uh, teres major, teres minor, infraspinatus up here. So yeah, just just slight adjustments uh, to the to the order of things. Uh, the silhouette looks pretty good though, pretty damn good. Just here, like a just here, you wanna I'm gonna sort this out. That's a little bit more like that. This one here, I'm not gonna do all of them, but uh, let's do this one here maybe. Um, Like the the thighs, you know, they're quite different in in, uh, in shape here or in size. Like the bottom one here would probably push against the uh, the top one quite a bit more because it you can't re <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> you can't reduce its its volume. It's just it is what it is, and so the other one would have to kind of make make him make way. Get the heck out of the way, bruh. And I can contour it. Yeah, a lot more of that, that one overlapping. And uh, maybe, maybe the, the shoulders are a little wide. Like you have the torso. Cage, something like that. Yeah, those shoulders maybe could need to be a little higher, not as wide, a little closer to the neck. Here can be can be higher, but a little closer again. Because otherwise, there's too much of a gap between the um, between the shoulder joints and uh, and the, the tip of the shoulder. Shoulder joint. <clears throat> it's too much gap between the shoulder joints and the maybe the sternum is what I what I meant. Because you know you need uh, you need these the sternum here to go like boing and then end up on the top. If it's too far, that bone ends up being like really really long. Not realistic. So you can't have shoulders that are too wide, otherwise the bone here has to be really, really long and and that's that doesn't work. <clears throat> so in her case, just pushing the pushing the shoulders in, gonna be that would solve it. Uh, so yeah, I mean small stuff, really small stuff. That looks that looks pretty good. And here I think it's mostly the mostly the arm. Looks a little a little. Shoulder, tricep, brachial radialis group to the forearm. But um, it's definitely getting better. So I'm happy with the progress here. Um, but yeah, keep focusing on anatomy. This is your like, this is your like your your Achilles heel. You fix that, <clears throat> or like as as you improve this. Um, yeah, 
great thing great things will happen in your future i predict it so, uh let's do robin and then take another break What's up, Robin? So I've been very busy lately. It was quite hard to manage my job, the freelance art stuff, and my game project. There wasn't that much time for studies or just drawing for fun. I feel a little bit slow on stamina right now. Welcome. Uh, I feel a little bit low on stamina right now, but this week, I at least found some time to do these characters, sketches above. None of them are super, refi uh, super refined, but I think you can still see how much I've improved since last year. I did this late in August 2020. It's quite funny to see it now and actually took me longer to draw than my new stuff Ooh. serious i don't yeah i don't know if i've seen this one have i uh looks maybe somewhat familiar what I mean, oh, oh, that totally made my day. Damn. <clears throat> For some reason, in like you know, recent memories and all the the recent weeks, months, I always I'm like, oh, Robin is gonna be like some killer arts. But yeah, I don't, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I completely forgot. That's that was just recently ish. Damn, it's day and night. Holy crap, imagine like that's what, a little, a little over a year or something? A year? August, less than a year. But imagine like another year. And then another year. You'll need to be arrested. That's illegal. <clears throat> I'm impressed. All right. So, and it took me longer too. So feel free to point out any mistakes. All right, let's take a look at these new, new ones. Damn, damn. Beautiful shading on here. Mm, look at all these, look at all these nice, delicious colors. Mm -mm. Yeah, if anything, I would just maybe like warm up the, uh, Warm up your transition even more. I'm like to like to shadow here. That would that would make it even more delicious. Warm up Tamanita. But um, that looks good. Nice arm. Um maybe like the shading going into the uh going to the the wrist. It's not quite straight, I mean. I have I have <laughs> weird tan also because of my bracelet, but um, like there's the change, a slight change of uh, you know, like from the side here. I, can, I think you can see better, but it's not quite straight. There's a there's a little bit of a little bit of like surface distortion happening. Maybe here going a little darker, so that the wrist can feel like it's. So it's clear kind of where the when the wrist is starting. Anyways, no, small, <laughs> very small detail. I would say also maybe the the hand shapes, uh, the the hand scales, a little little difference. Like that one feels a bit bigger. Like love the handle, very nice, nice and chunky. Yeah, that that left arm definitely feels a lot a lot bigger. Like it's just a big forearm, big hand. I feel like this one feels. I feel like this one feels. It's a lot of feelings. A little, a little small in comparison. Like, I 
that might be more up to scale. Right. Yeah. Looks really nice though. Um the the first <coughs> excuse me, the the second set of abs. So number one here that's resting mostly at like the transition between the um, the rib cage and the stomach where there's no no rib cage uh so that one's gonna stick out usually catch a bunch of lights and then maybe the top of the the other the 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 following set of abs but the body of those will mostly be um pointing down so that's gonna be like starting to go towards the inside of the inside of the belly like towards the belly button so like the curve you know if we have the curve here sternum and then it starts to shift here already and going going more towards the inside the rib cage kind of like that. Um, so those wouldn't get as much light essentially. Shadows would start a little sooner there. I think that looks that looks a bit weird, but yeah, usually it's the top two. Like these two here. That gets some lights, and then the other ones a little bit more recessed. And then the belly, again, catches more lights. Yeah, looks good. And here, um, looks very good, too. Um, very good. Maybe the feet are a little small. Compared to like the this guy's this guy's hands, could be a little a little longer to match the the length of his legs too, and just the yeah his overall his overall size. <clears throat> and then in the torso, the muscles are beautifully shaded. <clears throat> legs look great. Uh, maybe uh, maybe like his chest is a little a little short uh, for how wide it goes usually. The, um, the chest always longer than it is wide. So, uh, I mean, you could, and then, yeah, maybe there's a little bit of foreshortening too, that you can, you could push that some more. Like he's pumping his chest even more. Then that might work. So if you angle that some, some more, have these abs kind of poke out even more. And then, and then it goes back in. Um, but yeah, but even then, I think we need to like extend that downwards just a bit, a bit extra, so that the chest covers a big, a, a bit, uh, a bit more. Essentially, giving him a, a longer, longer sternum, um, so that it doesn't have like too long to reach before it can actually connect to the, connect to the arm here. And probably, 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 probably bring that shoulder in just a bit. No. Just compared to the other one, maybe it's, it was a little, a little too far out. Have it feel a little more in line. And this way, it doesn't have to travel as much. good you know it's uh <clears throat> the first the first impression that we get from these it's very good uh most of the anatomy is on point it's just like it's just small just slightly off in, in a few places uh but it's only after looking at it for a while that uh, we kind of start to notice these things <clears throat> oh just like shading also like in the front here You know the the chest itself is kind of like this uh, this big box. So if you have a little bit of shadow here, you would have the same thing on the leg. So right now, like maybe this the light continues a little too far back. 
Just trying to push the hips forward a bit more so that the hips feel like it's right there and right there. In the corner of a box. That one's nice. Mama! I am impressed. All right, Curtis, you're up next after the break. <laughs> All right, we are back in 10, 15 minutes. Once again, I'm going to go get a bite to eat. I'm starving. My, my stomach's been making a ton of noise. I hope you haven't heard too much of that. Be right back in 15 or so. Let's keep going. Next up, Curtis. So, <laughs> ooh, look at this. Yummy silhouettes. What's up, Curtis? So I did a few more constructions this week, and I tried to add a bit more anatomy to them, like you suggested. Also started working on another character, yeah, character picture using my new and improved poses. Um, let me know what you think, and if there, are, if there's anything that could work out. All right. <clears throat> oh, oh, I am happy to happy to see this. Look at these, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So overall. Uh, these are super solid. Um, the, like the the main issues um, that you should work on your anatomies uh, in your anatomy and the main issue in your anatomy that you should, that you should work on uh, is mostly going to be the like the placement of the knees. So the knees um, and <clears throat> hips, and those are those are tricky. I mean. Uh, yeah, shoulders, shoulders, pretty good. But shoulders a little bit too. So it's always the joints. It's always, the joints always the problem with everybody. It's the hardest thing to to get right, anyways. Um, in my opinion. <clears throat> and um, I feel like this is the area that you should focus on the most. Do like a lot of those studies, like looking at those those joints, shoulders, knees, and uh, and hips in different angles, foreshortened or not. Um, There's a lot of subtlety there that's, excuse me, that's easily missed when you draw, you know, like more like simplified figures, like the stuff that you that you did last week, for example, um, which is which is in a way, I mean, <laughs> it hides you know, a lot of these, a lot of these issues. And uh, for a lot of people, that's, that's the style that they prefer anyway. So they never really have to look into it, but um, but why would you not? You know, you have the skills to pull it off, so... Uh, and it just allows you to understand the structure better anyway, so... Win-win! And so, <clears throat> let's go into it. So... <clears throat> so let's let's start with the shoulders. The shoulders probably the, the best... The best ones out of the, uh, out of the three that I mentioned. Um, so... Shoulders like looks looks pretty good here. Um, well, just always like keep in mind, you know the the chest through it, so chest muscle going into the shoulder and attaching in the clavicles here. And yeah, so you're gonna get like that little that little gap there, and the shoulder attaching onto the <clears throat> the delt attaching onto the the, the the lateral part of the um, of the clavicle. So making sure that there's always enough space there and um that looks good in here maybe like that yeah that one looks good the problem is not so much with this one here um although maybe a little bit here it's like it's super subtle uh like the shape of the shoulder <clears throat> like you probably have a little bit more mass here and a little bit less back there uh just because the bicep would be a little too fat otherwise <clears throat> Um, and here, that's a tricky one. Yeah. So, clavicle going into the shoulder joint. Probably gonna be a little bit more, a little bit more on the outside here. So poking out a bit more, I would think. I would have to use a reference to be 100% sure with this one, but um, <clears throat> basically from this angle, you have the uh, the anterior the anterior head of the delt. It's going to be very flexed. The middle one's good. It's going to be mildly flexed, and the 
the posterior one is going to be super flexing, stretching all the way here. Uh, so very narrow, this one. Probably, yeah, I don't know that we'd be able to see it from this angle. Anyway. Um, and then the shoulder here would just reach a little further down to the arm. And uh, yeah, and overall, just, I think, a little bit more towards the outside, a little further away from the, the rib cage than you had it. Yeah, I still would have to look at a reference just to be sure, but <clears throat> I'll double check that one. Um... Yeah, to leave enough room, to leave enough room for the, the trapezius going to the neck. Yeah, I think it needs a little bit extra room. Back one here, that, that was pretty good. <clears throat> In here also, I think it's just maybe a little, a little short. Uh, like I said, the shoulder is definitely not the big, that big of a problem. It's super subtle, but it's always, like, it always feels like it's a little too short and eh, a little too tight in this area for like the width of their, uh, of your character's torso, torsos. <clears throat> To the about the halfway point of the arm, uh, yeah, minor. So let's uh, let's keep over that. <clears throat> let's move on to the other ones. Um, the knees. So most of these are good. Maybe maybe this one here. Like knees tend to point inwards, so like the default position for the knees is always a little bit on pointing on the inside. <clears throat> for most people, like just standing up straight. Um, yeah, that one looks good. I think it was on on this character here that the knee is the bigger issue. So knees and the hips. So let's take a look. It's really good. Uh, like the top of the body, nothing to nothing to say here. This looks awesome. Love the design too. It's <clears throat> just a little something in the hips and the knees. So let's see what we got here. So it's symmetry line. The leg here kind of overlapping the crotch just a little bit. So hip bone will be somewhere around here. Somewhere down there. Yeah, so like up here, it looks like the we're looking at like the side of the uh, of the glutes, but the knee is facing us directly. So I think there's a little bit of that uh, of a disconnect here. So in this case, you know, the knee would be probably facing that way a bit more, like a little more um, towards where the, the pelvis is facing, essentially. So. Probably more like here instead. As a result, like we wouldn't see as much of the inside of the calf. Maybe a little bit more of the back here. And then it can it can twist, like the foot can twist outwards, but, but yeah, the knee would probably be a little bit more in the front here in this case. To match the uh, the rotation of her pelvis. Not that big of a deal, but uh, but the pelvis, like in here as well, a little mm, like the legs don't have enough enough room maybe, and like uh, this goes up this way. The line here is a little different, more twisty. <clears throat> Yeah, 
it's super subtle. Yeah, like I think it's like the joint maybe a little too a little too close together. Like this leg might work better. Might. Might not. Let's see. We're a little wider. But yeah, so I'm nitpicking, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> I like the twist in this one too. It may be a little strange. If that's the front here, the torso really needs to twist a lot. Like maybe the hips would be. Because right now it looks like the yeah, like usually the knees and the hips point in the right in the, in the same direction usually, uh, unless you're like you know unless the legs are super spread out. But in this case they're not. You know they're kind of pointing in the same direction, and so for the hips to be you know like for the hip box to be kind of like in this angle uh, there's a big twist here it feels a little uncomfortable so i think it might work better if the, if the knee was maybe like more like here crush is more like there and you had less of a twist in the torso Maybe I'm wrong, maybe you used like a reference and it's exactly like that. It's just like this line here seems pretty. This line here seems weird. But maybe not. Uh, but it does look weird. <laughs> I don't know, I would, look, I would need to look at the reference that you used for that. If you used one, uh, to know for sure. But yeah, so overall, uh, the joints. like. Play, pay closer attention to the joints. I think, uh, <clears throat> like your hands, your feet, uh, the limbs in general, the way that you handle the, the muscles, how you simplify everything in here. Uh, I mean, it is quite on point. So it's just, uh, yeah, like cleaning up the corners of the anatomy, the, those damn joints, making sure that uh, mechanically, like you always have a good, a good idea of what they look like in your head. And that's like the final final bit um, that I recommend that you that you focus on. Otherwise, man, killer stuff. <clears throat> Super impressive. This character looks awesome too. <laughs> Moving on to Vika. Ooh. <clears throat> Later, Coco. <clears throat> and Laura, I missed you. Uh, sweet dreams, you two. All right, because I keep working, I keep working on my final project. I have a couple new illustrations to show you, as well as the cover C -c 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 compilation. Now, the usual, please. Another question I had was, how many illustrations designs do you want for the final project's presentation? Is there a solid number per character, creature, props? Um, no, it's. I mean, the final project is really. Uh, <clears throat> like the direction that you take it, it's up to the student, right? So, which is like 15, 15 pieces overall. That in that that kind of range, uh, that would be the target. But as far as like what those pieces are, entirely up to you. Like Curtis, um, just go oh, back to Curtis for two seconds. Uh, like cause all of this, all of these things is stuff that I struggle with too. So, <laughs> like the kind of stuff that I've been doing has been helping a lot is um uh like studying 3d models from like different angles so like doing rotations around them um so like the same thing but different angles like i don't know like from the front from the side like three quarters from the side the back you know that kind of stuff um i find that helps a lot um and the same thing when the when the the joint is bent when it's not <clears throat> anyways just wanted to add that um there we go so um so yeah for the final project project 15 but what those are up to you uh, <laughs> oh, this is good. yeah so i saw that on the forums that looks and that looks that looks as legit as it gets it's good professional stuff yeah so um 
love the design of the <clears throat> love the style the the mix of tech is awesome the details in here like how uh, look at all this mmm yummy the lighting awesome uh yeah there's a lot going going on for this um the feedback's gonna be like some stupid stuff but <clears throat> like um like fold uh like here how it's kind of like a, a nice staircase uh just trying to vary that into just a little bit more uh, like randomness to the folds maybe like some deeper fold in here when it's like right next to the um right next to the color thing or maybe you know maybe this one's gone it's just like a bigger one instead and maybe you have like another small one can slide in between yeah that kind of stuff Yeah, with her, I think that was the, the only thing that was that kind of stood out. <clears throat> um, Curtis, good 3D models for that. Um, <laughs> honestly, I use my own, um, but uh, you can go on uh, probably like Sketchfab is gonna have a bunch, like some uh, like some 3D scanned models. Cash fab, yeah, that, that, that would probably be a good a good spot to, to do it. I just have like a bunch of um, models that, you know, like older models that I spent a lot of time like just anatomically um, just getting right. And so now I can use those as reference, kind of funny, but <clears throat> um, yeah, sketch fab would be, would be pretty good. Because I know there's a lot of 3D scanned people on there and then you can just rotate around it, like take screenshots and then study from them. Uh, yeah, good one. Yeah, this is some minor stuff, but um, yeah, like that looks a little flatter than the rest. Like everything else, so nicely rendered. The hand kind of stands out, but just because of this area, I feel like, and maybe like how the the finger here is lit the same way as the palm. Maybe it could be darker or lighter. But this one looks awesome. Ah, uh, that one too. <laughs> I want one of these. Bring me snacks. <clears throat> um, the only thing I could think of here that that would make like any any amount of difference would be maybe like bounce lights. Um, if the ground is that, uh, like this kind of stuff here, marble or like some some white floor or whatever, um, <clears throat> very reflective. So we get a lot a lot of bounce light coming from the ground. <coughs> Excuse me. Might help. Eliminate maybe like a little more, <clears throat> a little more what you uh, what you did here, like like warm up warm up these shadows. Maybe that's too much, but uh, yeah, bounce light I think would help because this area gets it gets kind of dark. Um, yeah, so other than bounce light, maybe like um, <laughs> like a lot of a lot of your materials look similar in that one. Like the same amount of shine almost. So I don't know, maybe like that metal is a little more shiny. <clears throat> like more of a cleaner, even though like it's still rough. Maybe more of a, a glossier finish. Like punching out these these tiny highlights. Boing. Boing boing. Just to yeah, just add a little variety. But uh I mean love the design. Yeah, it's really just like this area. I wish I could I could just see the stuff, see the details better. Like that arm, you know, if you have like that, that extra bounce light, you'll be able to see it better. Um, <clears throat> it's like the bottom of the cage, the, the, the cage, the bottom of the cave could be a little warmer as a result because of that, that warm, warmer bounce light. Uh, and then maybe one thing that's not, not as accurate would be like the, the center of the pelvis. You can feel based on this here, boing, 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 boing. Let me try to curve it properly. I feel like the the hips are just a little upset. Not the hips, but like the you know this plate right there. Uh, actually, all the plates like they're rotated this way. 
and the torso is in a slightly different direction. Minor detail, but but I kind of notice it. And as also like it gives you kind of this uh, thing, 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 like all of this lines up. As a result, maybe if that was pushed out a bit more, like the end of that that plate, the end of that plate would be maybe off of screen, so we wouldn't see it, and so you get kind of this slight angle still. Um, yeah, the minor, 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 minor. <clears throat> Otherwise, beautiful composition. Love the colors. Uh, yeah, maybe materials could be pushed a little bit. Because some of these, yeah, like some of the plates here, even though it's all busted. Oh, actually. Oh, ooh, ooh, I like this. <clears throat> like the, the metal kind of shining through here. Oh, you should do more of that. I'm just noticing it here. Like the the metal that's, or the, the like the paint that's scraped, scraped off the metal. Oh, that was cool. Maybe it. Mostly minor stuff, um, which is good. <clears throat> That's high level stuff uh, and a super cool project. Uh, you know, um, maybe one last thing. The like the text here, a little hard to see. Like if it's smaller, <clears throat> maybe it's because of like the black on the inside. Because for logos, you know, always try to like shrink it down to like, you know, if you had like had it on a sticker or if you had it on like a website, like at the top of the menu on the website and see if it still reads as well. Maybe it's just a matter. It's just a text too, like everything else is super cool, but. <clears throat> Come on, Photoshop, what the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Let's see, let's see one. Yeah, that's probably too much. Just wanna test. Ah, uh, that's nice. Yeah, maybe something more like that. I mean, now maybe that's too much glow, but I feel like it reads much better now from a distance. And that's the whole point of the logo. It's not to necessarily look pretty, that's the bonus, but it's to, the, the name is like, right in your face there's no questions you can read at any scale so maybe i would tweak that just a little bit so that it, you gain that kind of uh, a level of of readability wait i'm not crushing it <clears throat> relax all right save that um so i wanted to work on some realism this week i'm not done here and <clears throat> Sending these side by side, I can see more than when I was in the thick of painting. But I wanted to know if you think I'm going, I'm doing a decent job of color picking, and anything you think could be um, could be done better, make it sing a bit. I hope you're having a great week. Yes, I'm back. Right on. Let's check this out. <clears throat> So just in the future, you know, like when you do those those types of studies to increase the difficulty, like if starting if you're if you're starting to feel like you're you're you got this, um, uh, try to separate you know your references and and your uh, your painting as much as possible, it's like on a different screen maybe. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> T help. Hell yeah, Vika. Looking forward to it. <clears throat> Um, cause yeah, the, the further apart they are, just like if you're painting from, from real life, you know, it's a, it's a lot harder to spot the right colors and, and color pick. Um, but you did a great job here. <clears throat> I mean, at first glance, if you look at this quick, like, what, what are these two photos about? Oh, one is a painting. Mm. 
So it's similar to what I was mentioning last week. Was it last week? Yeah. Um, it's almost like you almost get this feeling of uh, like a, a model that's like it's missing like almost like a render pass. So it's subtle. It's subtle enough, so it's not that big of a deal. I just wanted to mention it. Uh, but like, you know how bright it is here right after the sleeve versus this one. Like you get a little bit of a... Eh. Same thing here on the outside of the arm. Um, like the side of the, uh, the thumb. A little darker. It was like almost gets brighter. Uh, like the, the thumb itself. Just a little bit more shaded, it feels like. Almost like that, uh, that ambient occlusion that's missing just a little bit. Super subtle. That kind of stuff. And here it's tricky, but it's like the, uh, like the fold in the skin and the part of the bone that you, that you can feel here. That one line. Uh, but I mean, overall, you did a really good job. Um, <clears throat> especially with this. Looks almost identical. Yeah, the background looks great. Um, yeah, it's going to be mostly... Most, I mean... It's the hand, it's a hand reference, of course, hand painting. Um, mostly in your values. So anatomy looks good, the structure of it looks really good. Uh, I think the proportions look great. Yeah, it's gonna be subtle shading stuff. So, <clears throat> like looking kind of overall, like when you kind of try to blur your eyes, seeing like what stands out and what doesn't stand out here and get definitely a little bit more, a little bit more darkness. A little bit more darkness on this side here, because uh, what this is really is just kind of like a plate. The hand itself is a plate, and then you have the muscles here on the palm kind of overlapping it. And so what you're gonna get is all of this shaded like, like spheres. It's, Top of the sphere, shaded. Top of the sphere, shaded. And then the inside is going to be mostly flat. In here. Um, so it's just that, that shading here. A little, like, pushing that some more. Inside, well, it almost looks like a, I guess the, the, like a light source, and that really makes it feel like it's on the inside of the hand. And I think that's a little bit missing here. And the shadow on the fingers too. It's it's really just on the on the rim, not so much on the inside here. So mostly dark sausage, but on the inside, you're very subtle. You're gonna get that hit of light. Here, but <clears throat> yeah, fingers overall look great. It's just like the position of the shadow, just a, just a little, a little off on the inside here. Just making sure that things go much brighter, and in contrast, that the muscles here on the side are much darker. And then it's uh, like looking at the anatomy. I think it would help you if you looked at. Um, uh, I mean. If you had something like this, for example, Ugh. I wouldn't be able to see it. Uh. I have my face will focus on the right thing. Come on, damn it. Um, yeah, so I mean, this is a little, a little overwhelming, but you know, looking at like everything that's happening here, so where the tendons are, where the bones are, and understanding the structure 
so that your your shading makes a lot more sense. Um, and same thing kind of with the thumb, understanding what goes on underneath the, the skin here, uh, why you get kind of like that that highlight right here. What's that? What's that bump right there? Like what? Why is there a shadow here? I mean, maybe the thumb is not not the hardest part, but you know, like you kind of get this this, this sphere shape right there at the knot at the joint, and then like a cylinder behind. In your case, it's a little a little flatter of a transition. Um, so yeah, it's super subtle stuff because uh, clearly you did a fantastic job here. Like it looks very very good. Um, it's, it's the small details and that's just going to be all anatomy and uh, great great way to to learn that kind of stuff like where the, like the fold here why does it bend there and like that that bend right here is going to be like this this part of the hand and if you look at it from the side it creates like a different angle and so it would be shaded differently that's why here at the bottom is brighter and this here is not as bright, it's kind of like the, like the corner of a box, the corner of a room almost. We have the wall and the floor. Um, so it's all these smaller things that... Um, a glow layer for the inner, highlight, uh, inner highlights. Yeah, so I don't know how you came to this, this result here, like with all the colors and everything. But, um, but hopefully... Um, going through like a process that will allow you to eventually recreate something like this but from purely from imagination so going at it um, by first constructing the hand right so without shadows or anything um just like pure construction of the hand and then adding kind of like overall details of the hand uh like details in the joints that kind of stuff and after that shading the hand uh but trying to abstract the light out so not looking at this at all here that highlights and trying to almost only look at the uh, like the overall lights in the scene, so not so much what like this this sphere here creates and uh, like the, the, the almost like the magnifying effect that it creates on the light and whatever. Like that, the reason why it makes this super bright and trying to just look at like that thumb here in like a basic in this environment essentially, where you have like a little bit of light coming from the top, but not too much. Um, <clears throat> and just focusing on the grayscale, uh, if it helps, also just you know desaturating this, so that you don't you don't see any of the colors in here. What? The? And really breaking down the process into steps this way, uh, layer per uh, layer per layer until you end up with the final result. And then yeah, at the end you would have maybe like another layer for that that super bright highlight. That would be a good one to to have separate as well. Um, so shading, and then the colors, and then the, like the final highlights, that kind of stuff. Uh, because then, once you have this process, you can do it on your own for anything. And it forces you to observe. It's it forces you to observe different things at different point and abstract other things. Like get rid of details in your mind when you observe something. Uh, very important skill in art so um, yeah looking at a reference like this like what would not be as good of a practice would be to just look at the end result and try to to, to copy it you know like like on like let's say a single layer and try to go right into the colors and, and be like all right so I have this right there so I'm gonna start with the background here uh, and then drop like the road and then all right so the hands gonna be hands kind of like this Right, and then you have like a big sphere in the middle, and then trying to trying to polish that. All right, so you have a little shadow on the side here, and then the finger goes like that, and then like a little, and then you go kind of like you know almost like like a computer, like from this side. All right, so I'm gonna render this part here, and then you move on to this other part, uh, almost like a, a copy machine. It, not nearly as as useful as an exercise. So make sure that you break it down into, into different steps um, because then it behaves the same way. Um, not behaves, but it acts the same uh, as an exercise. It acts the same way as, uh, as drawing, gesture, drawing.
where you can't really pay attention to the anatomy. You don't have time. You can't really pay attention to the shading. You don't have time. You just have like a few minutes to, to get the essence out of the pose and uh, breaking this into different steps, different, different layers this way. That's exactly what it does. So very, very good for your observation. That helps. Moving on. <clears throat> to the And this kind of stuff also like it makes the difference let's say uh, that's why a lot of people would be like well I, I did all these studies and i'm not improving because if it's just copying if you're not trying to observe like and and break down what you're actually looking at this the progress is very very slow very disappointing <clears throat> awesome all right you so I've been, I've been reworking this exorcism scene over and over, as you know. <laughs> and I get to the point of polishing the line work for each character and refining the proportions before I had to talk to Vika. Before I had to talk with Vika. <laughs> What's up, Lydia? Uh, she gave me some feedback that suggests that even my dynamic posing wasn't really very dynamic. All of the figures are stiff and the poses don't really work yet, particularly the sword person who would easily would be easily thought of by trying to threaten or control her her prisoner <clears throat> oh okay so so vika's angle is more in the the logic of the poses gotcha level but I like I like the thought behind it yes <clears throat> yeah yeah indeed you know there's not a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of strength here from in this position like yeah <clears throat> that guy yeah so let's say <laughs> this guy is in some sort of trouble but if he wanted to, he could probably just like punch her in the knee <laughs> and then run away. And it'd, it'd probably be fine. This one here, much more trouble. That one is effed. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm including her suggestion about him rights, which also puts the focus on the exorcist, exorcist character, whom I would like to emphasize. Night of your advice earlier, I'm trying to come up with a composition of my own that isn't based on Jenner's, like the left image, nor on Vika's directly. I'd love to hear what you think of the piece to the left, and whether the perspective I've roughed in below would be an improvement on how you might repose the scene. Ooh. <clears throat> What do I need to see? I like this. So yeah, so I mean, technically speaking, they're both great, you know, uh, but yes, indeed, like that makes probably more sense. Um... <laughs> I 
Anna's trolling. <clears throat> but now I'm really curious about this photo. About this reference. Um... So, uh, I mean, this looks great. It's just like the... What I would personally recommend is that you kind of get rid of the the perspective as much as possible. Keep the keep some overlap though. Like you don't want to have just one character here, one character there, one character there. That sucks. But but like this angle, ugh, man, I'm like I would I would need to psych myself psych myself up for a few days before attempting something like this. You know, like it's especially like a finished piece all these characters it's like oh man it's overwhelming um this one there's a little bit of it too you know it's uh it's <coughs> definitely three-point perspective but the angle is not not too intense but this is this is really hard My suggestion would be to have the characters almost like in no perspective at all. So let's say we have the we have that one here. Maybe she's in the back. Or maybe like maybe like a little bit of a like four point perspective. But like a very subtle one. Like uh, like mo I mean, this is four point perspective. We can see the top of the feet in a way. <clears throat> no, it's not. Yes, it is. Um, so something like this, but maybe like the our our uh, our eye level maybe is a little higher. So you know, like you maybe you have like the character here in the back that's reading the book. And then she's like behind, behind everybody. <clears throat> and then, and then, and then, right next to her, but maybe a little, maybe a little closer. Almost like, yeah, yeah. So this one is in the back, this one's in like, in between, and this one's in the front, maybe. You have like the other one here, that's maybe like hunched over a little bit, or. Or even bigger, she's closer. Holding out that dude. And then he's like right here. Right in front of everybody. With the sword in front of his face. And he's having a really bad day. And then maybe you don't even show the rest of his body. You know, it's kind of like a crop out or something like this would be I'm not saying that you should do this but do this exactly of course <clears throat> but something like that where the the perspective is not really the like it doesn't really add any difficulty in this case because it's not nothing too crazy um, the impact would be almost probably the same uh, in terms of like the amount of wows wows that you would get out of this uh, if anything, like it allows you to draw, to focus on on the quality, the quality a little bit more because you don't have as much to paint, you know. Like you really only have like one character, maybe maybe a little harder because you have like three heads. But but this way, like this one here blocks a lot of the other one. This one here don't need to draw the entire body. This one's just half a body. This one's yeah completely behind the other ones, the other two behind the book. Uh, it just reduces the workload a ton. It allows you to focus more on yeah, more on the quality, on the the lighting, maybe the shading, the, the texture, materials, um, and you're not bothered with crazy perspective. <clears throat> Let me see this. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, 
that's good. <laughs> nice sweater too. <clears throat> Later, Preston. It's just like the, the wow level would be pretty equivalent and then your workload would be much, much less. So this is just like the lazy person in me, like uh, recommending something like this. Uh, don't have to do it, of course. And here, like what I am not a fan of, and I've I've done pieces like this where it's like top down where you see like the character's head's really, really big uh, and then the rest of the body is really small. always ends up looking strange like it conveys a different feel like you're above all of them and you're looking down on the scene and so like it diminishes them it, they don't look as imposing it's just like it sure it adds a level like a, a level of dynamism but at the same time like it i don't know like a, it feels like it changes the uh changes the story a little bit in a way that i don't know like i found most of the time this is not worth it. I don't know. I don't want to. <laughs> don't, don't want to. Uh, to influence your idea, but. <clears throat> or if anything, like if you were to do something like this, maybe less of an angle, you know, so you don't have that big head, tiny, tiny feet, feel as much. Because it does make us feel superior. And then the scene as a result is inferior and you get like this weird relationship between the two. This this works a lot better because then you feel smaller. Everything feels like, oh, that's more impressive. But when you're taller than everybody else, you look down on stuff, you're like, nah, nah, nah. at least I imagine because I'm not that tall. That's probably what I would do if I were if I was tall. Uh. <laughs> And also just difficulty level here, like to pull this off is really hard, really high. Um, doesn't doesn't look bad at all. It looks pretty good, but um, I feel like this guy's feet are or the legs are too long already. Like uh, for this to work, you probably need to have the feet like. Like even short like the leg even shorter uh this one here you probably need to push that towards the front a bit more as you can see like the arch in the back torso in front of the hips and then the leg uh, the the head would probably be on top of everything else as well so like a little bit more forward and it's, it tends to like bunch up everything too like cram everything into like a really tight space Yeah, like it works as a photo, but like, you know, <laughs> but like the leg here, it's, it's comically short when you draw it. And I don't know, at least I found it. It's hard to get over that feeling when I, when I'm painting it. Um, so I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, but, um. But, but that's that. So warning uh, about this can look very, very cool, but yeah, it's, it just, it's, it tells a strange story most of the time. Um, it's just a weird angle to look at any scene. Um, and it's still a ton of work, so. I don't know what you're gonna do with this information. Um, and take a look at this. That looks good, but the arm is always gonna be in front. Always, always in front. 
maybe this one here that kind of goes inside of the scene um will kind of intersect with the breast so yeah so you might you might have a little bit of that here like I'm a little bit of a of an overlap but the arm that's in front never never say never but not in this case Also, like for the the length of her torso, not that our not that our torso is too too long. I think it's fine <clears throat> for the legs and maybe like the the arm could be a little the arms could be a little longer. Not the forearm. That one's fine. That one's fine too. Uh, like, but maybe the upper arm. So like if the elbow is down here instead, I think that would work better. Um, and as a result, like kind of lowering. Let's see. The red cage. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe shifting down the breasts so that they're a little a little lower. Yeah, a little bit. in this region. And the same thing here. Overlap. The boot go on the inside. Uh, good luck with you. <laughs> Santiago. What's up? Um, so yes, thank you very much. I did. Um, so I have the same illustration from last week. I changed some stuff, especially in the background. I decided to scrap the ground. <laughs> That's not the right word. Scrap the group of faces in the right side. I think it was too noisy and I couldn't find a way to make it work. Um, and given that I don't have much time for the contest, I'll stick with a single face and maybe put some extra details in the knee and uh, the trees. Uh, please let me know if things can improve. Um, please let me know things I could improve, especially in the background. Um, and lit face from where the light is coming out. It's supposed to be merging with the tree itself. Also, I'm planning to give some light rays effect coming out from the light source as if she was draining the energy from the person. Hmm. <clears throat> ah, yeah, that's cool. Okay. Um, why? Yeah, the the part where she's like merging with the tree. Mm, I'm, I'm not selling. I'm not sold on that. <clears throat> I think it's just uh, it's maybe too abrupt. You know, like he goes from bark to skin like too soon. Like not not organic enough of a transition. So it looks more like when I look at it quickly, it looks more like her leg just blew up. <laughs> and unfortunately for her, she's got no legs now. <clears throat> like everything else is cool. Uh, everything else works. It's just like, yeah, the way that her leg kind of blend, her legs kind of blend with the, the tree. I feel like you would need to, we would need to see the like, you know, for example, if this if this was happening, like you can see this the, the shape of the hand, and then if that connected to a tree, then it'd be like, oh, all right, so it's her hands turning into a tree, and then it, and then it kind of connects with the rest. But the fact that the leg kind of just stops, yeah, I think that's um, confusing, me. bamboozling me. <laughs> what the hell, Jade? Jade, that's. We tell our kids not to do that because it's so bad for your joints. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, what about, uh, what about this leg here turning into, like, if it's, it's like still a leg, you know, the shape of a leg, but then it turns in, it turns into like tree bark, you know, like her, like her hands like this. It just feels like you don't have enough space here to make that work, you know? Uh, so I don't know how, impor how important that is to the illustration. Uh, but I just uh, can't come up with a way to make that work on the spot. Um, what I would default to is, all right, it's just a leg. And that leg becomes a tree leg. <coughs> 
<coughs> Excuse me. But it's still the same shape of a leg. And so you're like, all right, it's clearly a different texture. That's not skin anymore. But it looks like a leg. So it's probably her leg. She's just turning into a tree. Got it. Um, for that one here. Yes, you would almost have to be like rodeoing on... Is that a word? No, it is. On top of this, this branch. Like she's just like sitting on it. And then this leg is kind of just going around the tree. The tree. And then maybe you can see part of it here. Uh, and I try to find like some other places where that she can turn into a tree. <clears throat> the hands already yeah, like okay, we get it. It just doesn't look like like bark necessarily. If you look at if you look at a person like this, it just looks like a demon. Um, and so you're like, all right, it's just like her, just her skin, it's like a leathery skin kind of thing. Even though, even if it had like really, really solid bark texture, it'd be like, just because of the context, I don't think it would necessarily read, at least at first glance, as a, as a bark. It'd be more like a demon skin. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. She needs to shave her armpits. Vika. Can't unsee that. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, maybe the hair also like maybe just the color, like if it were much darker here, and maybe not as a, uh, as close to the armpit, like just covering the tip maybe like something like that. I think it wouldn't read as much. <laughs> it wouldn't. It wouldn't read as like long armpit hair. Um, So yeah, so yeah, I don't know Santiago. So again, like I don't know how important it is that that her legs turn into into a tree. Uh, it's just like you, you really don't have that much space here to sell that idea. Like if she were if she were standing, for example, you know, she's like standing in a forest. You can have like the the context of the forest around her, like kind of all the roots kind of going towards her, and then the legs kind of merging, and then you have the entire length of the leg to to have kind of like that transition into skin. I feel like you don't have that here. Um, so maybe like the tree, the tree part, maybe it's on like, it's almost like armor or something. Like maybe it's covering like her, her knees here, maybe her elbow. Yeah, that sounds stupid. That's a stupid idea. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, but at least now it looks like like legs. You know, she's got she's actually got legs. She's sitting on something and she's doing something to that dude. Feel like that's most important. But correct me if I'm wrong. And, uh, and then yeah, if you're gonna have like some some cool like effects here, uh, that's gonna be nice. Like she's draining his life. Yeah. Anyways, all oh, that helps. Luke. What's up? I feel like I've been stalling a little bit here. Uh, right, Luke, so this week I decided to take what I've learned from the background studies and take another try at doing a full illustration from imagination. I didn't get to finish it in time, I still need to detail the background plus color. But I wanted to get your opinion on the unfinished piece. My only take is that I feel like the character is over detailed in regards to the background. <laughs> Pretty depressing. Um, 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 um. All right, well. <clears throat> Um, first thing, I feel like maybe she's a little, like the scale of things, maybe a little, a little strange. Not like that big of a deal, but like usually when you sit on the bench, you know, your, your feet are comfortably touching the ground. Uh, I feel like if she didn't have heels, like she wouldn't, she'd be kind of floating like, like a kid with the head, the legs hanging. Um, so like maybe this is like a, a tall bench. Uh, probably the easiest would be to just lower it. Or maybe she feels small, like very petite for uh, for this for the bench. But then, yeah, like there's not much of a not much height up here, so maybe it's just like just a matter of just dropping this whole thing. Let's try it. Yeah, 
Maybe that would work better. Um, <coughs> composition is nice. The, uh, I feel like the the characters probably a little too stiff. So, like, I would highly recommend that you do a lot more gesture drawing to to loosen up your figure, because uh, you get a lot of these like stick, you know, looking limbs. And really, limbs are if it's just the skeleton, if it's just the bones. Yeah, it's pretty straight, but. When you add the bone, uh, when you add the muscle mass on top, like the fats, it really takes a lot of, like, you really introduce a lot of curves. So like here, you know, that could be pointing forward a lot more. And that arm could be a little backwards, maybe. Maybe a little bit of a, like of a, of a bow, bow in here. Like she's putting a lot of weight on her, on her joints. And so they're, they're bending a little bit. Um, same thing here with this leg. More of a, more muscle for the calves. And as a result, you know, we can introduce the, the bow like this in the, the lower leg. Uh, <clears throat> So yeah, just uh, unstiffening the figure, I think would help. Also, maybe the head's a little small for the uh, for her body. Lighting also could probably be a little, a little tightened up. So we have a lot of light coming from above here. Um, so that's gonna, if it's gonna light her up this much, probably her hair is also gonna be a little shinier than that. Uh, top of her shoulders, top of the leg here, probably that leg too, that knee. Um, and like the top of the bench. Probably be catching a little bit of that light as well. Because the last plank on these benches is always a little bit angled. Probably catch some extra light here. Um, and then maybe it even reaches all the way to the back. And then she can cast a little bit of a shadow. But, you know, like in terms of the, the level of detail, so far, seems pretty good. Um, like you would probably, you know, like as you continue to render this, maybe like introduce some some extra fold here in the in the jacket. Were there any? Yeah, there were. Like yeah, maybe some maybe some deeper deeper ones, like um, that impact the silhouette maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, I mean detail wise, I think it's it's pretty good. Yeah, maybe like some in in, in the foreground here, you could have like some of these droplets of water, maybe a little bit. A bit more in focus, we can see them a bit more clearly. You know that, that kind of stuff uh, to bring the focus a little, a little closer. And everything that's in the background here can be just slightly out of focus, which is why it's maybe a little, a little fuzzier. Um, but I, I would focus on that maybe just around like in close proximity to her. Everything else, I think it's, I think it's nice because then it doesn't attract too much attention. She's the focus anyway. So moving on, moving on to Alessandro. What's up? So I made the seat. <coughs> hmm. I made the seat lighter and put my character more in the center, like you suggested last time. Ah, yes. Uh, so I'm not satisfied at all with my color choices for the character, but I want green, red, blue, and yellow to be part of it. Maybe it'll be better with shading and the light. <coughs> That's one thing. Um, Colors always change a lot when you introduce shading and lights. Uh, you know, you can have like a like a green outfit, like uh, no. <laughs> Duh. 
a yellow outfit or orange outfit like this, but then we need to do some lights on here. Maybe the light's really bright, and so it turns this into mostly white on this side. And then you have the bounce light from the ocean, which is more of this, uh, this bluish green. I'm gonna, pack, I'm gonna light up the bottom here a little differently, and then you go with like darker shadows where there's not much light. And in the end, you, you know, you end up with something that's just a mix of a bunch of colors. And sure, a little bit of a yellow tint to it, but but it changes a lot. So you can always. <clears throat> always bend these colors to your will with lights and shadows <clears throat> so also i'll soon end my career as a notary to start my journey and try being a full-time artist i have several questions oh snap um i know that you already said that school and diploma is a loss of time but isn't that but isn't it kind an easy way to kind of an easy way to start plus isn't it a good way to make contacts with other artists and community? Changing careers uh, like that is freaking me out. And I don't know how to find a job here in France without going to school. Uh... <clears throat> well, I mean, you're meeting a lot of people here. Uh, <laughs> pretty much the same. If anything, you probably meet fewer people if you were to go to school. Um, yeah, like online communities are like, huge, huge parts of... Uh, of the people that you'll be working with in the future. I would say <clears throat> out of everybody that I know now that are my friends or are people that I know really well that I've worked with, um, that I used to study with, you know, like back in school uh, and like the, the one year of fine art that I did before I dropped out and the uh, all the people that I met online. I mean, there's way more people that I ended up working that I was just, I grew up with in different online communities um i mean it doesn't even compare I don't, there's no I, I work with nobody that i've studied with and i've worked with many people that i just knew from online so in that sense of course my experience is not the only one that can vary quite a bit obviously but um and but also my biggest gripe with university is the price if it's not if it's not expensive right so if the government pays for most of it like it does in in canada uh where you go to university it'll cost you maybe like after the few years that you're there that you're there maybe like i don't know like 10 grand in total something like that maybe a little more maybe less <clears throat> then that's not really a problem like everybody most people can afford this you just even if you work uh, part-time uh, it's just it's the price of that damn education in like in the uk for example in a lot of places in europe uh in the united states it's just it's just the worst deal ever you can never find a worse deal than that uh versus what you get uh, what you, um, for for what you get versus what you what you pay for uh it's just it has to win the price as the worst deal in in the history of deals so <clears throat> If it's free if it's uh or if it's close to being free and if you feel like it'll keep you motivated that's, that's all good things you know but just don't count too much on on the contacts that you'll make there ah, probably not gonna change much uh online communities definitely way more likely to impact your future and um and yeah <laughs> that's about it um Anyways, let's keep going with these questions. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Does my work, or at least what you remember of it, already were already worthy to start making a portfolio? Do you know how long it takes? I haven't done any pieces with a goal with that goal in mind. <coughs> how long it takes to build a portfolio? I mean, it can take a long time at the beginning. The more experience you have, the faster it goes, obviously. But uh, it depends the portfolio for what too. You know. Uh, let's say all you want to end up doing, which is a completely valid uh, way to to become a professional nowadays, is to have just like a Patreon or or sell a bunch of stuff on QBrush. I mean, some guys on QBrush are ridiculous. Like they they start like a little app or 
a little uh, or just like a popular brush set that ends up being being shared by some bigger artists or some companies too and they, they end up making bank with just just the silliest thing uh, and then they turn that into their career brush maker out of nowhere um, it's just there's uh there's not just like people like studios paying you as a way to earn a living doing art there's many many other ways and as as more time goes on there, there are just more opportunities more ways to make money so it really depends what you want to do um your portfolio will will impact a lot of that too so <clears throat> like who are you trying to impress are you trying to impress studios big studios small studios people like average people like the public um so yeah so let's say you have like a, a portfolio full of, of concept pieces that's gonna be a lot faster to populate than um, like a, an illustrator portfolio where you just have like all these big illustrations that take a lot of time versus just concepts that take much less time much less polish uh, or if you're trying to i don't know like sell commissions like sell portraits and maybe you want to do that for a living later and have like a patreon and i don't know whatever and uh that would be a different route you know like your portfolio your portfolio would be full would be full of of portraits maybe that's not as long as it that's doing like a full illustration and so <laughs> all of this to say it depends um when is a good time to start making a portfolio probably right now you know as soon as you have a few pieces i'd say as soon as you have, as soon as you have at least it's not even a minimum just right now is a good time <coughs> and you'll see you'll add more and more and more to it and at some point you look at the first ones that you uploaded and be like ah, that's not my level anymore then you start taking those out as you bring in more in and more in and more in as, as you keep producing more and more um uh, so so yes <laughs> the answer is yes do it um my current goal would be to uh, would be to be a concept artist but isn't school a good way to discover all the jobs that exist I'm not sure i want to quit my job just to do art on my own at home it might uh, it might be too hard and not engaging enough to force me to have a daily art routine uh, <clears throat> That's another good, another good point. Um, yeah, it depends on your personality as well. Um, some people would much rather work for a studio and have like something that's stable. No real opportunities to grow, at least not as much as working for yourself, but uh, but maybe less stress. You know, maybe that's worth it. Um, and if school. It, good way to discover all the jobs that exist not really uh if anything schools uh, are mostly outdated and so they have no idea of all the jobs that exist uh again online communities much more much more likely to help you there um not trying to dis dissuade you from from going to school you know go for it if that's what you want if you feel like you need that structure like i said it's good for a lot of people um but uh it's the price is my my biggest thing And, uh, but if, I, <clears throat> if at all possible, like what I would personally recommend is to, <clears throat> if you have time in your, in your job right now, since you already have a job, you're already making money, uh, is to, to bring in art, treat it as a hobby as long as possible. So have fun with it. Don't stress over it. Like I need to become a source of income right away. That is the best way to crush your, to crush your motivation and or maybe not, but usually it's just the, all the added stress, the pressure is just, it makes creating art not as fun. And I would keep it as a hobby for as long as possible on the sides as, you know, as you're, as you're still making money in your, in your current job. And then when your art starts to make money, like when, when people start asking for commissions and cause that's usually how it starts for most artists, you know, professional artists like myself, I started doing commissions and then smaller gigs left and right and and then eventually a studio but a studio is often not kind of the first step so i would wait until you have all these hints that oh it's the art is at a level that i can earn some money now 
and then that becomes a lot more motivating and after a while if you're starting to make a lot more money you're starting to get a lot more a lot more uh, interest in your art people you know throwing more money at you for commission stuff like that and you're like well now it's you know i'm kind of limited in time be, uh, by my my old job and i don't have as much time as i would like to to spend on art and to to earn more in this way and to develop my skills now i'm seeing that there's you know it's, it's bearing fruit this stuff and so and then after that you can ditch your job and be like i right, screwed up i'm focusing on art 100 percent I don't know. I would, I would think that's the safer safer way to, to approach it, but <coughs> I'm talking too much. All right. <coughs> we'll hope that helps. Uh, like I said, there's no there's no right way. You know, there's just many different ways to go about it. Uh, That's not true. There's one right. There's wrong. There's one wrong way to go to school and get student debt. That's the wrong way. Anything is better than that. <laughs> so with this one here, um, real quick, real quick. I already spent a bunch of time here. Uh, Like this works because she is right in the middle and she occupies the most real estate on the canvas. This works again because she's full, like front and center. She takes most of the space. This one too, that one too, that one too. Uh, this here, this is no character, so it doesn't really compare. But, uh, but look at all the character illustrations here. They're all much bigger in the frame. And so, I, I would personally go this way, the, this route as well. You always want to make it very clear what the illustration is about. Is it about the person or is it about the environment? Um, you know, in these environments, there there are people sometimes, you know, like maybe some people on the ship, but they're not the, they're not the focus. And so the ship's pretty small in comparison to the, the whole environment. Same thing here. The, the ship's not on that bad. I mean, what are these? Are these people? I don't know. But uh, there are some people in here. And but they're they're so tiny that they they're not important. What you what you look at is the whole environment. That's that's the piece. It's the environment. And so in here feels 50-50. So I would definitely if the character is important, lower up even more. Um, and focus on on one or the other. If she's not that important, then. Make her even smaller. Maybe she's like on the side here, like just chilling. Hey, on the rocks, like smoking a cigarette after she killed that big dragon. <clears throat> but the the environment will will take kind of the lead. Um, what else? Moving on. <clears throat> Before I completely run out of voice. All right. <clears throat> hmm. What's up, Ron? So long time no see. Yeah. Uh, so I, so I've been slacking for a few months. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, for this week's stream, I present this piece of to be which I'm currently working on. So far, I've rendered the face only, and others are in the rough stage still. I'm not satisfied with the hair, as it does not look like the character enough. I need some pointers. In that regard, also would appreciate any other suggestions you have. All right. <coughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh, see, uh, this is a good example for other students, you know, to. Uh, to look at something that's really dark, but not void of detail. You can see something happening here. The light of the sky is lighting, lighting up all these things. You can see all those details. Mm, that's nice. Let's get my, what the heck is in my eye, man? One of her hair flew in my eye. Love it. <clears throat> Personally, I would crank that up though. Um, 
it's so nice. You know, you have such these nice, these nice subtleties here. I know you, you say, yeah, it's, you're not, <coughs> you're not done, but, but who cares about? really good so far I uh, love the lighting very nice uh, composition wise like just make sure to like, to kill some of the the values here on the on the sword just so because it, it looks almost like a like you're pointing in that direction and there's nothing um, <clears throat> It's a little bit less visible. No problem. Um, her hair. Well, she's got kind of a like an egg shape going on. <coughs> Excuse me. pretty spot on but uh, <clears throat> I mean she does feel like your reference does feel like she's got a lot more hair you know I think that's the main difference in here like the width of her face almost like from here to here and what was the relationship here <clears throat> not quite half what is this I don't know, 70% of the width of the face? If it's like the 3D model, I think it would be more like that. The amount of hair that she's got. Which seems like a lot. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of hair. I don't know, honestly, like, your version looks better. Eh, I know that's not what you're asking, but... <clears throat> but it's mostly a scale thing, so she's just got a ton more hair in your reference. tips are a little bit more a little bit better to find so less dense than, than in your case but I mean it's pretty pretty damn close dude did a really good job with this <clears throat> phase the nose shading here look at that nose very nice Yeah, I mean, I made the I made the hair bigger, but to be honest, <clears throat> it's even bigger here. 
It really looks like a big helmet, almost like a uh, like a pilot helmet that she's got on. <clears throat> Yeah, maybe that's too. I don't know. Uh, I personally wouldn't go more, more, much more than that. Uh, yeah. Other than that, maybe having some sort of a like once again some sort of a gradient, good old, good old gradient, um, from this point on to to her color, her neck, uh, if she's. If she's outside and the sky is illuminated, it's going to be a lot of light coming down. And so, yeah, probably all of this here, top of her shoulders, top of, uh, top of the chest, probably going to be catching a lot of that, a lot of that light. Uh, and so you could use that. As a reason to light things up, not light them, the overlay. Mostly the top of her shoulders, top of the breasts, maybe this little stuff here, little flappy things that stick out. Um, yeah, just more lights on her body so that it feels like she's uh, she's not just like a, a cutout. She's an actual 3D person and. Uh, not all the light behaves the same way. That's, uh, da, 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 da. Probably a little bit more on the top of the head too. You know, you have a lot of this the light here. It's going to bounce off. It's going to create a lot of... Uh... You're going to get a lot more light up here. <clears throat> Anyways. What the house? Moving on. <clears throat> Jad. Uh <clears throat> Yay. Coughing team. Woohoo, high five. Uh, so I'm back with this piece following your feedback. Removing the colors and adding more around the focal points. Plus reinforcing the entrance. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm -hmm. oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. <clears throat> so I'm grateful to you and your of knowledge. I uh, usually don't uh, do environments because I fear it, but you reconcile myself. Awesome. Damn, that's much better. Oh, yes. <clears throat> oh. Snappy snap. Yes, I like a, all these little highlights here. From all the all the waves that are kind of facing facing that, that light from the inside. Oh. Mm, ah, very nice. Yeah, that's that red in here and the, that makes this place so much more inviting. Uh, now like my eyes always looking at this that is a good focal point right there yeah maybe you can have some some of those those red highlights too on the these metal metal surfaces right next to it uh Yeah, no, this uh, this area is very nice. Nothing, no, nothing to add to that. Um, <clears throat> so what changed in the background? A little less saturated. So. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> what 
what the hell, Kevin? Alright, Jad, um, so, uh, mm, most of the feedback will have to do with this area back here. <clears throat> Boing. Uh, so I feel like maybe, like, the transition between this and this, a little, little too fuzzy still. Why is that? I'm just trying things, I don't know. I don't know exactly where I'm going with this. Mm. Na, 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 na. Like the the biggest issue in this is how the, the building blends with the background and with the sky. The whole environment, like I'm struggling with the sky, because the the whole environment, it, like reminds me of a a scene like right after the sun has set. So there's still a little bit of light in the sky. So yeah, like a little bit of warmth back there, but mostly the sky is like starting to turn into a like, nice sky. I think that fits better, like with all the all the blues in here and. <clears throat> But really, I'm just trying to also help the red pop even more, like trying to find complementary color to that. So like natural, you know, natural <clears throat> go-to would be the, like the blues, uh, some greenish, greenish, uh, greenish blues. But in this case, it doesn't really make sense with the, the time of the day. <clears throat> Tricky one. <clears throat> That's why process always always important because you get to uh, to focus on like details later. Because right now like some things work and then you're trying to make other things work, but there's so many constraints that you're kind of limited with what you can try. <clears throat> like my go-to. If, if if it were me, I would probably go towards something like this. Um, so giving the almost like the whole scene kind of this this, this yeah, more like reddish, not reddish, but like the saturated red tint, uh, but super red where it where's the focal point, and like very desaturated red here and like the highlights on the buildings just because the sun is about to set and it's like you know this. This, this uh, lower frequency of light that, that can reach. Um, and then everything else in the shadows is this nice blue because because it's almost nighttime. <clears throat> and like probably in here you, you need to, to blueify that stuff here too to make it work with the rest. And 
and then uh, blueify trademark. So I don't know. I feel like I'm changing way too much. Um, but if it were me, that's kind of what what I would do with this. Like before, before here, nothing was really, really screaming like I'm the focal point. So was like, I think we, that's what I mentioned before. It was more like like a background, you know, like for, uh, for like a TV show or something when you have like people in the foreground kind of just walking and talking. Focus would be on them. Uh, and then now, like the lighting here is big improvements, and uh, it kind of revealed that building out of nowhere. I was like, oh, uh, cool, and kind of interesting. And now, now that building is the star. And it, it works because it's it's like an inviting area. You wanna you wanna go you you wanna go walk into there. It's it looks mysterious, like cool colors. Like oh, that's that's really interesting. And so now this is the start of the show, clearly. Um, and the environment stands on its own; doesn't need to have characters in there. But <clears throat> like now that this is the star, whereas before there was nothing that was really l yelling louder than than the rest. Now we have kind of like an order of things. So now we found the number one, and then like what happens with the rest? Now it's we need to kind of organize the uh, uh, the other other actors in this piece. Uh, so that's why like I feel like there wouldn't be a much. Uh, there wouldn't be a way around like adjusting a lot of stuff now to make that work. But I think it's worth it. This, this looks really good. I don't know. I hope that helps, Chad. I completely changed everything. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm moving. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that's you, Kevin. Just a double tracking. <clears throat> yep. All right. So uh, here are some gestures and first construction of heads. How are these? Am I doing anything wrong? Nice and flowy. Look at this. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Something only an artist would say. Uh. Oh, these are really good. <clears throat> One thing that would make a huge difference, it's a, a tiny thing, but look at the feet. Uh, they're not bad, you know, they feel like pretty, pretty planted, but feet just add a ton of gesture to pieces. So if they were just like, I don't know, like a little, a little more like feet like rather than like a shoe, but help. This, uh, that one's nice. But maybe again, like a little. Adding a little bit more of an arch in here. Helps feel the weight of the character better, sells the gesture even more. Uh, <clears throat> same thing here.
having that foot like really planted on the ground, like the, the toes kind of like grabbing the grabbing the ground, makes a big difference. Um, but but only when the pose is nice and uh, really nice pose here. Beautiful curves in there. Um, propor proportions quite spot on. So to like maybe the same thing with the hands, you know, like having the hand like just flatter here and. It just feels like there's more weight, more weight to it when they're not as, as poofy. Good to me. Maybe, if I may, this could be a little closer in terms of distance. Those distances have to be the same. But, uh, very nice. Nice. <clears throat> nice confident lines here too, for the most part. At least, <coughs> excuse me, when you zoom in, you can see a little bit more of the, a more of the hairiness, but, but, overall, Nice flowy lines, confident shapes. Uh, mm -hmm. These are really good. Uh, yeah, look, I spent some <clears throat> not too late, not detailing the hands or anything like that or the feet. Um, but pay close attention to feet, especially if you're getting requests about it. Uh, but it's more so the like the gesture of those extremities. Like here, you could even like just get rid of the the thumb. Who cares? Don't don't need for a thumb. But, like making that like the weight of the palm kind of just like you can feel it. It's flat on the ground and like the fingers are kind of working around it. Uh, those those are the things that are gonna sell really really sell a gesture, especially. Uh, when when these are connected to something, when they're touching the ground, touching like the feet touching the ground, or or holding things, uh, or just like any character standing, and then and then and then <coughs> and then there was Ariel. What's up? So I've noticed in my work that I paid too much attention to details and not simplifying simplifying things enough. Especially, I noticed when I first <laughs> when I first trying close assignment. Water, water. Is this thing dripping. <clears throat> um, so I've tried two new styles to get inspiration from how other artists do it. The above one took inspiration from Frank Frazetta, and the one below more from a Disney style sketched. Uh, sketch I've stumbled upon. I've stumbled across a tangled, specifically Glen Keen. <clears throat> Glen Glen. Hmm. All right. So simplification of folds. Kind of a like what you what you observe out of it. Which Extract out of something that looks complicated like this and making it read well with just a few lines. Alright. Looking forward to that, Kevin.
especially if he's the one that's stepping on people. <clears throat> Where's the Tangled sketch? Oh, that's the, oh, okay, okay. That's the reference. Got it. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's proper sketchy. All right. All right. Another good example here, why feet makes a, make a big, big difference. Like if, if those feet were just a little tighter, it'd feel like they're connecting more to the ground. Like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, let's try. gesture here the way that the direction of the uh, of that hand volume mm. that's a big part of what makes it what makes this so nice so dynamic like it doesn't have to be super detailed but you know at least Try your best to get like some of that gesture in there because it really, really helps sell the sell the pose. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> otherwise, otherwise, it's, it's really nice. Like some of the stuff that you could that you could kind of ignore, you know, uh, when we we're talking about the folds here. Can do the same with um, with your anatomy. So some stuff that a lot of people kind of just don't draw. There's gonna be the details here, like around the hips and the legs, like this this bump here. A lot of people kind of just ignore it and just turn it into just like one big slope. Not to say that you should just ignore all the details, but but simplifying sometimes. more like uh look at yeah ignore what i just said ignore like the last 10 seconds that i just said uh instead <clears throat> look at kind of like the uh, shape that this creates here you know kind of this, this underwear shape point and point and then the legs are kind of just attached to that two big long ellipses attached to this to these this underwear Try to find these kinds of shapes and focus on those. Because <coughs> those are much easier to to remember uh, when you draw when you eventually draw from imagination that kind of stuff. So how's the pelvis again? Oh yeah, it's kind of just like a big pair of underwear. Like, draw, draw that first, almost like ignore where the legs are. Just make sure that your underwear looks look good. Boom. All right, so it's not too long here versus here. Maybe a little straighter there. Boom. All right, nice briefs. And now we can plop the legs on here. Photoshop will let me work in peace. Stop interrupting. And now it's not so much now that it's like, you didn't really have to draw this curve. It's just like the curve is there naturally because of how things are attached. Um. So, process. How you build this up makes a big difference. It 
forces you to observe things differently. Um, don't ever look at the silhouette only. Like, look at the volumes. The silhouette is just the result of all those volumes being attached together. Not as important. Uh, of course, it's important to double check like your, your distances, your proportions, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but when you construct something, uh, like the initial sketch, the initial uh, scribbles that you uh, that you put down on paper before going into into the details um, should just be volumes. That's it. Nothing else. So what are these things like big cylinders, big beans, whatever? Uh, this here, yeah, just it's like a barrel, more or less. A barrel like that, and you shove the sides, point. And then you're left with something like that. And then if it's a female, you can make that a little bit... Like you can taper down this top of the barrel, so you get more of a slope this way. It's not just straight down. It curves a little more this way here. Torso attaches there. And the legs attach there. Boing, boing. Um, this process is the most important. That makes sense. And and when it comes to the folds, yeah, I'll mention this again. But select your references a little bit better. Uh, I'm not mentioning this to you again. I'm just I I uh, I mentioned this like every stream. <clears throat> but pick references that. Uh, that will be more useful for you, like your your references. Not all references are created equal, um, essentially. So try to find ones that have good lighting. Like, that's pretty good. And other ones that have like fabrics that you'll probably use, like instead of like some super crazy metallic reflective shiny fabric, or, like glowing fabric that you'll probably never, never draw. Uh, find stuff that's pretty common that you feel that you might reuse for your characters in the future. You know, like if you never draw dresses, then don't worry about dresses. Fine t-shirts, that kind of stuff. Uh, but if you draw a lot of a lot of princesses, then, then yeah, that, that's a pretty good one. Just find references that you'll be using in the future. That you'll be reusing in your own arts at some point later in time. Um, This looks really good. So, like personally, I wouldn't worry about um, like the the values at this point. You know, just worry about the the lines. So instead of like filling this in, I mean, I would just leave it the way it is, so that you can see those folds here better. Um. Also, lines only uh, feels like it's a little more aesthetic. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. This looks good. This looks really good. There's just, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, I think the most important in this outfit is, yeah, to make sure that we see, we see the dress here. It's attached. I uh, got something at the waist, and then a lot of folds kind of stem from that. So this is important. This is important right here. Um, and then the sleeves, for the most part, like the stuff on the head, not not super not super relevant. But uh, but these here, that's gonna be another point of attachment, another point of tension. And then you're gonna get a lot of kind of just almost like a almost like this is a neck of a character, and then this is the cape of the character, right? Neck of the character. If you replace this with a head. Hi. And then he's got kind of this, this cape around him. And in that respect, I think, uh, I think that works pretty well here. One section there. Another section, another little 
flap here. average of 12 minutes that's that's too slow bro all right <clears throat> i uh need to hurry up my feedback from now on i'm taking too much time but um that was helpful and um, 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 um i had a good time so a lot of really good really cool stuff today uh a lot of progress a lot of people i'm excited and i um Hope that even if you didn't submit, you got something out of this. And once again, if you're watching this a little bit later on YouTube, months in the future, welcome to the future. Uh, I wonder what it's like for you. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to learn more, if you want to art, if you want to get your art reviewed like this every single week for a year, you can find more information about the art school program down in the description below. And um, yeah, if you made it through all of this, congratulations. Uh, you win nothing except probably you're just a little bit better at art now. Um, so hope you guys have a good rest of your weekends. Good creative week ahead of you. And I hope I'll see you next week. Until then. <laughs>